Welcome to DAX Machina. Join us as we explore the mysteries of this world. Cryptids, monsters, macabre tales, and horror stories abound. Could they be true? Are monsters real? Good evening, folks, and thank you for joining us on another edition of DAX Machina. Joining me tonight is my brothers from another from other mothers, Anthony Pitbull Canatella and, and Carrie Pocket Doc Davis. Doc, how the hell are you, brother? Quiet, I am rolling. <laughs> and if you if you guys remember here about a couple months back, we had Robbie on the show. Robbie Reigns is a uh, law enforcement officer from South Carolina. I uh, love his South Carolina drawl. He's got a great accent, and he's just started a brand new co- podcast. And I, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this podcast. It's called What's Really Out There. And it, the, he's got the first episode up. Uh, he, he had actually sent me the episode before they even aired it. And I got to preview it. And it, it is a really good episode. And, I, and they're, they are uh, going to be breaking some serious ground. And he's also going to be bringing us some of his own encounters with the big guy of the uh, the big guy of the woods. So guys, give him a warm welcome. Robbie Rains, brother, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, welcome to the show. Ah, thank you for having me back on, DA. Always a hey, pleasure. anytime, Always man. Fun. Anthony, Doc. Yes, sir. For those for those of you that weren't weren't part of the conversation we were having just before we went on air, you get a couple old cops together and we start swapping stories, and some of them ain't fit for 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 uh, being aired in a public forum. So, but you know, some sometime you guys catch catch us in public, you uh, you might hear some of these stories. Oh. So tell us a little bit about about uh, what made you decide to do this podcast, and uh, and you know what 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 your plans for the future are with it. Well, what, I guess really, what made me decide I wanted to do it, um, you know, a lot of it, a lot of credit goes to you, DA. Whether you, you know whether I've told you or whether you know it or not, you know, having me on your show and being able to talk about it with you and Anthony that time we had, I mean, you know. I don't want to use the word liberating. I hate that word, <laughs> but it, it felt good to be able to talk with you two and, you know, get that out and, and talk to people who are like-minded and have, have that conversation where, you know, you know, we talked about it on, you know, the people cutting side eyes at you, not like, oh, whatever, this guy's crazy. Right. And, you know, I, I think you heard the line in the, at the end of the podcast when Lance and I were talking, you know, being crazy by yourself is not fun. Being crazy with people, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. kind of acceptable. It's always so, good to find people with the same level of craziness. Exactly. So, you know, it was just one of those things where I was like, you know, this could be something that that would be fun to have because, you know, I, I listened to Cam show uh, um, on YouTube and on iHeartRadio, uh, What If It's True, and I, you know, was just binge listening, riding around the road, you know, listening to these podcasts, and I was like, man, that's, I mean, that's that would be fun to just, be able to talk about this stuff yeah. not for a living obviously but just to be able to talk about it yeah so i started thinking about it i still wasn't really sure about where i was going with it and uh i helped my dad do cwp classes i think i, th- I told you about that before da mm-hmm. and uh my buddy lance also helps out and you know we're good friends and i just kind of bounced an idea off of him about it and he's like man i'm interested in that stuff too i said you are? Hmm. No, the Tim Allen moment. Huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I love that show. <laughs> gotta love Tim Allen. But uh we so we started talking. I said, Well, it, what do you think about doing this? And he's like, well, I'll be honest with you, man. He said, I'm I'm kinda nervous, I'm kinda scared to death about doing stuff like that. I said, Don't worry, I am too. You know, I I told him how I you know, how I felt before I came on the other time with you and Anthony and y'all were just like you know, just talk, just act like normal, just like we're sitting right. here having a conversation. And, and that's what I told him. And that's how we decided to go about the show. Was just, you know, and I, I told you that you gave us that advice and we had already <coughs> kind of started heading in that direction. It's just two guys sitting around talking, you know, kind of pulling the cruisers up beside each other. Windowing up. Yeah. <laughs> so, Done that many, many times. Yep. Me too. And it's, it, it, it worked to just kind of, and we were sitting there talking. We were in his house and his little uh, shop out behind his house, and uh, we were talking about it before we put the camera or before we put the recorder on. And he said, "Man, you need to just hit record. And let's just let's just talk." And I said, "All right, let's let's do it." So we were both nervous, but you know, we just 
we'd already done a few little sound tests on it so we just we hit record and just started talking and you know i i think it turned out fairly well so. yeah you don't you don't realize it you just get so used to talking and just you forget about it it just flows yeah because we we were like oh well we'll try to maybe fill up 15 mm-hmm. 20 minutes before we knew it, 40 minutes was almost up, and we were almost out of time. We are like, oh, Those wow. are the best Where'd conversations when you just kind of lose yourself in the conversation. Yeah, we do it here on the show. You know, we've gone, what, three hours one night. Well, I, we were I mean, about three hours that night I was on, I think. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've, we've done it. Like, you look up, and you're like, whoa, it's three hours. We didn't even realize it, you know. I mean, you get going. You, you don't even feel like, like you're, you're on. The, it's like when we're on here now. I mean, I know we're live, but, you know. Uh, they, to me, it's just we're just we're just bullshit. That's all we're doing. We're talking. And <laughs> the cops know how to do that pretty well. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, just just ask my wife. You get any two two of us together, you know, me and a co- any any number of my buddies together, we will talk for four solid hours and never let up. Yep, cops, firemen, EMS, we all have the worst sense of humor, the mm-hmm. darkest. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Doc, well, you, yeah. 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 You ever cleared out a cleared out a restaurant late at night because you were swapping stories over dinner? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people who are not in the profession have no clue. They look at you like, "What is wrong with you? What are you <laughs> laughing at? That's yeah, not I, funny." <laughs> yes, it is. I think you, you're not. You, have to find you either it. laugh or you go insane. So we choose to laugh. That's it. Gallows humor, I suppose. But speaking of cop stories. Now, I don't want to bust you out on the air here, but you guys have got to listen to this podcast. I just posted the link in it, but you mentioned something in that podcast that I kind of fixated on, and I couldn't wait to put you on the spot about it. Go ahead. You said it. you worked a call one time where the driver reported they, the wreck was caused because a Bigfoot ran across the road. No, no, we were talking about bears. Oh, bears. I thought you, I misunderstood. I thought you said it was a Bigfoot. I was like, oh, this is going to be a good one. It's just a bear. Now I'm just disappointed as hell. I'm a, I Sorry. guess I wasn't paying as much yeah, attention. We, we were talking about that. That was the point where, where the part where I'd ask Lance if he'd ever seen a bear uh, skeleton in the woods. And he was like, no, never. And we were yeah. talking about they were just, you know, we kind of in the rural, rural area of Easley where we were at, but still sort of close to civilization. And he was talking about, you know, just within a couple hundred yards from where we were at, I said, you know, I've seen them in the city that I work in. I actually work in a wreck. The bear come running across the road, and a Mustang come up the road and plowed into the bear. Mustang ended up going on a tow truck. Bear ended up walking off down in the woods and mm-hmm. going on about his, about his Okay, business. I completely misunderstood that. <laughs> that would have been a good call, though. Yes, it would have been an awesome call. Imagine, yeah, try to, imagine calling into the insurance company. Yeah, I, I swerved to avoid a Bigfoot. Oh okay, well, how drunk were you? Yeah. Your insurance is now canceled because you're an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even SR-22 is not going to cover that one. Sorry. No. No. There's no Bigfoot coverage. <laughs> Encrypted collateral insurance. Yeah. <laughs> we hear Encrypted collateral. We'll believe you. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> that really isn't. Dog men tear the porch off your house. Bigfoot crash your car. Give us a call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll cover you. One eight 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 Bigfoot. Yeah. Oh boy. But yeah, uh, getting back to the to the pocket. It's like like I said, you know, coming on your show kind of helped me, I guess, break that ice. Uh, you know, of hey, I could probably probably do this. I think honestly, the biggest problem that we're going to have is deciding you know, what exactly we want to talk about. and Because, you know, South Carolina is kind of, we, we talked about wanting to kind of stay in South Carolina. Well, there's not really a whole lot other than Bigfoot sightings in South Carolina. I mean, you got the lizard man down Lee County, but mm-hmm. past that, there's not really, that I've been able to find anyway, there's not really a whole lot other than, well, you know, we don't want to get pigeonholed into just a Bigfoot channel or, you know, we want to right. open it up and, you know, go. Lance, Lance is a cop Bigfoot. too, correct? Do what? Lance is a cop too, correct? No, no, no. no. Okay, well, the way you guys talked, I kind of thought you guys were both both uniforms. Well, I mean, he 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 been friends with me and my dad for so long, and just it and he helps out with it. Plus, Lance is like that buddy you talked about. I think he was born with a pistol in his hand. Mm-hmm. He, 
he's the best non law enforcement shot I've ever seen in my life. He eats, sleeps, and breathes. Like the little building we were in doing the podcast Mm -hmm. behind me was all his reloading stuff. Like I turned around and looked everywhere I looked, there was like, you know, there's a, a ammo can full of dyes for, you know, 30 caliber or this. (laughs) Yes, <laughs> everywhere nine millimeters, all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm home. <laughs> yeah. I love that smell. Yeah, and then on the other side, behind him is where his son, who he mentioned there was becoming a fisherman. He actually makes his own lure, so he had all that set up behind it where he was making. And I'm, not, you know, I'm talking about like the the stuff that you go buy, right? Uh, right. Top water lures and all that kind of stuff. He's making all that stuff, so mm-hmm. it, it, they're very. That sounds like a great room. <laughs> yeah, very talented family. I know I've got an, uh, an idea for a, a show for you guys. Now, I think this was North Carolina, not South Carolina, but, it's, you know, it's something that you guys should probably explore because I'd like to hear you guys' take on it. Is sure. what was a few years back when that little kid was uh, was uh, went missing and he said he was pretty, he was kept by a bear. Oh, what, we, what we talked about last time I was on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when yeah, we talked I, about that, would, that would probably be something pretty good. Yeah, that would be a pretty good conversation for you guys. That's that story. There is no way that was a bear. No, no way in heck that was a bear. I have to do some, uh, some research on that. And see if we can if we can get that because we've already been kind of trying to come up with ideas for the next one. I think we're gonna try to hit, uh, probably record it maybe this weekend or first of next week maybe. Oh yeah. How much activity you have up there right now that you know of? I mean, I'm sure you're gonna get bombarded with stories once your channel starts taking off. Well, that's yes. what I'm hoping because, as far as the BFRO goes, I haven't seen anything really, really current. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they don't report they, everything. They don't report. Yeah. yeah. So, I still need to figure out some other sites other than than that one. And, but, and you know as well as there's I a, one called the East Coast Bigfoot Research Organization, the ECBRO. Yeah. You might be able to find some on them. Okay. You know as well as I do, the people in that area. I mean, you know. Even down in Florida, when I hunted out down south, they're very private. They're not going to go and go, "Hey, BFRO, you know what?" No, yeah. where the hillbillies are around here, right? They'd rather well, talk to you. That, right. that organization has gotten and is getting here lately, and I, you know, I'm not talking bad about them. It's just, but you, ain't, you all you got to do is open your ears to hear. Mm-hmm. Stuff I mean, they know you, they know that you, you know, you're a native South Carolina, you're from South Carolina. You're, you know, you're you're in law enforcement. You know, you're one of the good boys. You know, they're just going to be like, "Hey, listen, this is what's going on." They're not going to call uh, BFR and tell them what's happening on their property. You know, it's the same thing that happened with this guy Scott. You know, that we're going to come have on the show. These things are attacking his house, and he lives in Florida here. You know, he didn't call anybody else. He was on Facebook, and we just started talking, and he's like, "Hey, man, I need help." I'm like, you know, you know, because we clicked. That's what you're going to get on your show. That's exactly what's going to get you all these, all these guests and people talking and stuff, man. Yeah, and that, you know that's that's kind of what we're wanting to do. I guess kind of like an investigative type. That's mm-hmm. I, guess, I think you asked that earlier. What, what we were planning on doing, you know, coming from my background of law enforcement and Lance's background of outdoorsman and just mm-hmm. people, you know, we get a, a case like the one you just uh, recommended, DA. You know, breaking it down from the law enforcement standpoint of okay, well, where does the evidence take us? To take us right. to the left, to take us to the right. You exactly. know, and for, in Lance's uh, perspective of well, could this have happened? You know, could is there an animal in that region that could be that it could be misidentified for? Just it, right down the middle, as unbiased as we can be, exactly. breaking it down to see. That, that's what that's the kind of thing that we kind of right. wanted to do. I mean, but there's some other stuff in there too, like you know, <laughs> talking about the movies because we both like the like the movies and things like that, and you know, seeing what part of the movies have kind of you know spawned some of this kind of stuff. Yeah. The talk over here on this side about you know, just we don't want to be kind of we don't want to be held into one specific type of thing. Mm-hmm. We just, you know, right. just. I mean, Lance has been what. Hunting for all his life, like you Pretty said. Much, right? yeah. he's, hunting, he's hunted all over the state. I mean, so, he hunted every every type of game, fished every every probably every pond and lake. Has he seen anything out of the ordinary? Be out. 
he himself has not seen anything, but he, and he hasn't told me yet, um, but he said he has some encounters, and he said his encounters are different, and he said we're going to get into them on one show. So I, I'm, I'm intrigued. That's, I don't know what it is, but he's told me some stories of some other people that are friends of his. Uh, one where some, uh, and I can't remember where he said the, the river was that these people were fishing on, but he said that the guy who was over there fishing said this guy was a skeptic, didn't believe in any of that kind of stuff. Me, said, he was over on the other side of the bank and he said something kept throwing rocks at him. And he said, well, when I say, he said, at first I thought it was kids playing with me. He said, but when I say they were chunking rocks at me, he said, this is like basketball sized rocks. He said, so he said, the guy I thought, well, if it was a kid, was if, out there yeah, if it was a kid that. that was doing this, he said, I didn't want to go mess with the kids that were able to throw basketball sized rocks that far. That's no joke. So no. He said, they, they, they packed up and, and took off, but he's, he worked with a couple of guys. Um, that have had some encounters that he's going to try to get them. We're going to get them on the show and talk to them. Um, and, you know, I'm going to reach out and try to find some find some people to get on the show. But, see, that's another thing. I, you know, I'd like to have you on DA as a, do a book review. because I'd love to. Your books are what got me. Right. You know, I was already there as far as that goes, but your books are what put, kicked it into overdrive for me. Because, like I said, the, and somebody asked me about them one time, and I said, uh, his books are like crack for police officers. Right, I said. No, like got, that guy said, I never read cryptids in, cryptids in it. It's got law enforcement. It's got military. It's got shooting explosions. I said it's crack. That's all it is. <laughs> and it's and funny. our sixth sense of humor. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, uh, you know, all you, Tom you know, Clancy and cryptids. Enjoy like the book. Does. I mean, just, <laughs> if you like action, you like this stuff. You're gonna like it. Yeah, he's the Tom Clancy of cryptid books. That, Thanks, brother. Exactly. I really appreciate yeah. that. Those are some big shoes. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, it, when you do the person, when you same like you get into your books, like we talked about, man, you got the same plot line going with some of his stuff when he does his research. I mean, you know, it's just, and then you add the cryptids into it, and that's what draws the people in on top of it. Mm -hmm. so it's like, I like I said, I never, I hate reading, hated it, hated it. And he's like, hey, I got this book, and blah, Wild Hunt, T Moden, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. And I got into it. I was like, holy shit, this is crazy. This is a good book. And then I got more and more into it. And, you know, now it's just, you know, it's like a, it's like a cult, cult following. Like, <laughs> and it's another one. And, you know, cult of VA. <laughs> yeah. Everybody blows up his page. You know, when's the next book coming out? You know, it's so, you know. It is what it is, man. I still say Tom Clancy and Cryptid. Sorry, but I, I was aggravating my son the other day, and uh, he was he was talking about something. It's about somebody's followers were called something, and uh, I said kind of like Insane Clown Posse. They call them Juggalos. He's like, yeah. I said, what are we gonna call mine, Juggalos? He's like, Dad, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> <Juggalos>. <laughs> oh God, that's awesome. That, that, that's funny. That, like, you're an idiot, Dad. That that band is still around. I think so. I don't know. Yes, they are. <laughs> Bunch of morons. I'm sorry. I'm anybody, <laughs> sorry. They're just morons. I'm sorry. So. I think they're still trying their hand in, in pro wrestling. <laughs> oh, that's right. They were on. They were on. Yeah, that's right. I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. They, I, I, last I heard, they actually have, have their own promotion. Yeah, like yeah. Juggalo Championship Wrestling or something, <laughs> something like that. I'm like, <laughs> well, more power to him, man. Whatever, yeah. whatever makes him happy. Yeah. Nineteen eighty C and H says hashtag Juggalos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there with the, the following. Things. The newest trending hashtag. <laughs> I've seen some of the following. I, I've got a few comments, but what, what do you, you know, I, this is mainly directed at the audience. You and guys, you guys and I were already kind of talking about it, but what do you guys think of the hat? I mean, uh, I've kind of switched it up from my normal Kolchak hat and uh, still got it, not getting rid of it, but thought I'd wear something different. Kind of like it. Here's a good one for you. Ready? <laughs> I like that I'll one. That. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. I get that one. Thanks. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, that's funny. 
Now, when Robbie, when you were on before, you talked about having an, having a uh, having a sighting when you were a kid, right. and uh, you know you've been kind of a believer ever since. But the funny thing I find about that is, is you still li live within what a hundred yards of where that sighting was at. Yeah, roughly. Pretty close. That is, uh, if you want to for, again for the people that probably joined the show since that that show aired, you want to give us a little recap of that. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that sighting. <clears throat> uh, um, back in the early eighties, um, I think <coughs> eighty one, eighty two, somewhere. About <coughs> Sorry. Uh, about a hundred yards from where I'm at right now, uh, my great grandparents used to own probably about 180 something acres here at one point. At that point, it was probably down to like 70 ish, somewhere around there. Um, right now, there's trailers, houses, all this kind of stuff built on there. But back then, it was nothing but woods, a, a pond, a little farm pond behind my great grandparents' house, and a lot of swampy area. Uh, long story short, I was. It was during the summer. Grandparents, great grandparents, and my mom were sitting out on the front porch. Uh, had one of them old yellow light bulbs that people used to sit on the front porch and have just sit and talk with those old yellow light bulbs. Um, I was inside the house, this old farmhouse that basically um, was a big rectangle with a few rooms built into the main big part of the room. So I was in the back side of the house where the den. In the back bedroom and the kitchen all connected in one big long line so from where i was sitting was about 12 foot from the start of the kitchen to the end of the house which you know back then like i stated before they didn't they didn't come in and level out a, a place they just used blocks and things like that and built the house like you know if you had some ground here and the rest of it was down here they built the house to level it to instead of leveling the land yeah so the back side of the house where the porch was was a lot higher off the ground than the front or the other side of the house so that is old concrete block steps that you could buy one big solid piece and so from the from the ground to the top of that old storm door was probably i would say 12 12 and a half feet give or take so to the very top of that door were the the front, you know, where you could see where the glass, say probably 11 feet, somewhere out there. So I'm watching TVs later at night, after nine o'clock, because you know, it already got dark outside. Whatever I was watching was over. I got up, turned the TV off. Light was on in the den. No light in the kitchen. No light in the porch. And I've said this before. I don't know how many times I've said it, but. I don't know what made me do it, but I decided I I just looked to the right to the kitchen. And when I looked, I could see straight through the kitchen into the that porch, that little mud room, that, and then the screen door. Was I look in the screen door? I see this face looking back in at me. Its head's up at the top of this metal frame. And I remember thinking, "What? What am I looking at? What is that?" And as as I'm looking at, I notice. I look at it and I notice it's doing this. But it's still, it's looking right at me. But it's swaying from side to side. And like I told you, DA, when, when I read read uh, the first book of the Wild Hunt series, and they were <laughs> out there in the woods, and he said, got contact. And they looked and they saw it. It was standing beside the oak tree. And I read that line, and it just all came back to me. That's what like they that. do. You're not the only one that said that with their accounts. You know, yep. it's numerous people say that. And numerous. That that brought, I mean, because it was always there. It's not anything that I've repressed or anything that I'm, like, ter I mean, it terrified me. Don't get me wrong, especially back then. Now it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But right. it's nothing that I repressed because I, but just reading that line brought it back to, to my mind's eye, and I could see that thing standing in the door doing that again. Like, you know, long, dark color hair. I don't know what it, cause it was dark outside, so I don't know if it was dark brown or black. Well, I, I don't know. It was just dark colored, long hair. No hair on the face. Nose kind of sunk in. Eyes sunk in. Um, I don't remember if there was any eye shine or not. And obviously with the light on where I was at, it probably it light up overhead. probably wasn't strong enough for to make eye shine anyway. But I could still see that it was, or make out it was a face. And like, if 
I was kind—I'd kind of moved to the side to see, like, is this a reflection? I'm looking. What is it? But if I'd move this way, it'd move the opposite way. Right. And it was constantly just doing this, and it was, and like I said before, it felt like this was like five to ten minutes going on, but it was probably, you know, thirty, you know, fifteen seconds at the most, let's say. And as soon as it snapped in my head that that's not a reflection, that's not a trick of the lights, that that's something standing out there looking at me. That is some kind of animal. I don't know in my head if I thought Bigfoot or if I, I just, the age I was, I thought monster. So out on the porch I went, you know, screaming to my mom. My uh, stepdad was a deputy sheriff on the road at uh, that time. Back then, no cell phones. No pagers, no nothing like that. Right. So I'm out there screaming, hey, you need to call dad, call dad, call dad, call dad. It's like, it's not even work. What, what's wrong? What's going on? I said, there's a monster out back. Um, I said, if you can't get daddy, call Uncle Brian. Uh, my uncle was 6'5", probably 350, 400 pounds, somewhere around in there. Not a small guy. And so they finally got him, called him to come down there. He came down and he went out to stand on the back porch on the steps to show me that it was just my imagination and where his head was was a good two foot under what where i said no it was up there you're right there it was up there and he was standing on the top step Jesus. so this thing had to be at least 10 feet nine and a half ten feet maybe more it's a big rascal ground was real hard packed though hadn't been raining for a while so there that I know of, I was never told that they that they found any footprints. But I think we talked about that earlier. They did go out in the swamp looking for bear tra- or claw marks. That they heard there was a bear out in the swamp that was clawing up a tree. Uh, thinking about it now, knowing the things I know and what we talked about last time, I think they probably, you know, believed a little bit more than they let on to me that they did. I, what makes me wonder if they might have had sightings of their own and just didn't want to scare you? Maybe so. Because you, you you mentioned that your grandfather would always bring the cattle from the one pasture up closer to the house at night. Yeah. But I say that was the thing about Pa. He was I mean, he was old school. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, this at this time of when this happened, he was already in his 80s. Mm-hmm. And so you can do the math. He was he died. When I was a junior in high school, I think. So he was pushing a hundred when he when he died. So he was old school. So he would have, I, 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 if anybody out there at that time that would have believed me, it would have probably been him. Yeah. So if I had to guess, I would be, especially considering the way you said they reacted, I would be willing to bet they they knew something was there. They just. You know, from growing up, uh, you know, back in the days, you know, they didn't know what to call it. They just, you know, a lot of play, people just refer to it as a wild man or, or you know, wood booger or that kind of thing. Because yeah. nobody had heard the term Bigfoot until the late 60s. Yeah. And it, it, they very well could. And I never thought about it that way until you said that because it's just not something. Because like I told you, my stepdad, he believes now. He believes <laughs> that I saw something. He you know, he, number one, the law enforcement standpoint from him is my story's never changed in 30 mm-hmm. something years. So I guess I was seven ish, about seven or eight. I guess that was it's been 40 something years now, tell my age. Uh, but, you know, it, We're both my never changed. I mean, he's like, your story is not going to stay the same. If you're lying about it, it, it right. there's going to be major change. You know this, DA. There's going to be major changes throughout. You know, I may embellish one part a little bit more this time than I did the last time because something else coming to my brain that just. Mm-hmm. But as far as the actual story itself, nothing has changed. Right. You, you find, well, oh, you know, then you know, like some people when they're when they're being deceptive, they'll say there was one, and then five years, oh, there was three of them, and, you know, and then there's four. Yeah. And the story, the story changes, but when the story stays, it changes, stays fundamentally the same. Other than remembering additional details, you know, details that don't change the story, they just add to the description. That's a whole different ball of wax than say somebody that was an eyewitness to an event that 
claims to be an eyewitness to an event that can't keep the details straight. Well, and that I don't know that I remembered distinctly here recently about the swaying until I read that line in your book. And, and yeah, I got that behavior from a lot of accounts people have yeah. talked about over there. And I talked to my uh, my other uncle, which he's not much younger than or not much older than I am. He's my stepdad's youngest brother. So we grew up more like brothers, cousins, you know, than mm -hmm. uncle and nephew because yeah. we were a lot closer in age. And when I was telling him about the first time that I was coming on and I, you know, I told him what I told you about the line in the book. He said, I remember you telling me that. He said, and I had never heard that in any description until I heard it from you. And then I started, he said, I started looking at it or listening more and I started hearing that more. He said, but I'd never heard that, that behavior until you told it to me. And I was like, cool. People so, would be shocked to know how many cops are actually believers. Uh, mm -hmm. Either they've been to a call or something they couldn't explain. They've either seen themselves or they've looked at these stories like I've done over the last 25 years, 30 years, and saw how there are consistencies, consistencies in these stories that indicate behavior. And, and, and especially when you talk to people that, like, it, like in your case or in the case of some of the people I've talked to when I was growing up and, and since then, whose story has not changed over the years, those are the ones that, that, that stick with you, especially, and these are the ones that truly stand out to me when you're talking to somebody and you get them to tell you a story and you notice their hands start trembling while they're talking to you and they're not even aware that's doing it, or you can see the goose flesh on their arms. Those are details you can't fake. That, those happen because of your recalling something, a vivid memory in your head. No, I mean, even now, like I told DA, I and mean, Doc knows too, um, where I live, it's, I'm like, I mean, I could spit to the National Forest, you know, and I still go fishing and stuff, and I, you know, it, I still do this. I mean, because you get that creep factor that just crawls up your back. I mean, after what I seen that day, I'm still just, my head's on a swivel, man. It's like, you know, it, it's, it's. You always have that in the back of your head. It's always, always going to pop up when you're out in well, the woods. When I when I was up in the woods in North Carolina for that tracking class, I, I told you, buddy. Yeah, there was there was times out there I was just like, "Yeah, this ain't good." Yeah, you're yeah. like, mm. and that's what one thing I find the most interesting when you get stories from that from from soldiers or or people who you know people who've been in the military, not necessarily just soldiers because that connotates army, but you know, anybody that's been in uniform that has a story or somebody that's been in law enforcement that's had, had a story because these are people that are tend to, tend to be hyper vigilant. And my, it drives my wife crazy. Doc can tell you, mm -hmm. uh, Robbie, you can tell you, Anthony, he's, he's experienced know, it too. It's, it's that same part of you that won't let you sit with your back to a door when you go to a restaurant, even years later. It's that part of you that you walk into a room and you're immediately plotting escape escape patterns or you know what to do if somebody in that room pulls a gun. It's those scenarios you're always running through your head that, that creates that condition that they refer to as hypervigilance. And I'm still guilty of it, even though I haven't been a cop for the last few years. Well, you pick up on everything around you. We talked about that. You know, I walk into a convenience store and it's like boom, 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 boom. Everybody, I got everybody plotted out already. And I'm quiet, just walk in, check everything out, look around, get my cigarettes, do what I got to do. We, me and DA have talked about it. You, you don't lose it. You know, people might think you're a little bit off when, you know. You hey, know, DA, but, real quick, I just, uh, Lance just sent, a t sent me a text. He's listening, so. Oh, if he, he wants to jump on. in, I'll send him a link. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if he's where he, because he was at a birthday party or something like that. Oh, okay. I don't know if no he's problem. Where he can, but he wanted, he wanted us to know that he's listening. So awesome. He's here in spirit, at least. Okay. I got a good question for you. You ready? You've Go been ahead. in law enforcement. How long have you been in law enforcement now? Uh, I'm 25 and a half-ish okay. years, 26 years, somewhere like that. In your 20-something years in law enforcement, in your area that you patrol or the area, whatever county you're in, which we're not going to give up, um, how many missing people come up missing out in the woods in your area? In well, in the cities that I've worked in, obviously none. I mean, but in the county, 
I'm sure that right. I don't I don't have, but we had a, a elderly gentleman not more than a couple of weeks ago who had dementia that wandered off. Ended up finding him, of course, you know, right. him, him wandering off. But we have stuff like that all the time. People go up to right. the, uh, up the table rock. And uh, we talked about that earlier, DA. We got a table rock here uh, in Pickens, but um, people go up there hiking and they oh, get yeah. missed sometimes. Yeah. And I know you guys have the, like, I mean, even South North Carolina, they have cave systems just like you guys. You mean it just goes right up the Blue Ridge. So I know you guys have them too. <clears throat> and, you know, even when I, we had the cabin in North Carolina, you know, my dad, when they were up there, you know, all oh, they you know, I'm like, what's going on? Oh, they're looking for, you know, two kids. I'm like, up here in the middle of, I mean, like, we were in the middle of nowhere in the Blue Ridge Mountain. We were in Bakersville. I mean, we were way up. Um, and yeah, I mean, it would be like clockwork. Every time I went up there, there's somebody was missing. I'm like, damn. I'm like, you know, you born and raised up there, you think you got more knowledge of the place, but. That's why I was asking you. I didn't know how many cases in your area that, like I said, I, I'm sure the county probably has has some mm -hmm. that that I probably just don't know. Right. Not working the county, but I'm sure that's something that I could probably look into and find out fairly easy. One thing I, I wanted to kind of pick your brain on, and I know I've 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 t mentioned how, from my perspective, how it worked, but I, I want without I know they're just kind of going into this cold. I want to see if your your gut reaction is the same as mine. What is your take on the missing four one one cases when the dogs won't track? Like, like you wrote in the book, the Lakeview man. When, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, what was it? The Legend of Boggy Creek. Mm -hmm. the first time I I saw something like that. And I look at it this way. A dog has way more senses and abilities and things that we have no way of understanding. So as a former canine handler, if my dog does not want to go in there and is acting like that, and he's never acted like that before, I'm going to listen to my dog. Because, exactly. you know, as a canine handler, that's something that is beat into your head from the time you start is trust your dog trust your dog mm -hmm. trust your dog you know don't don't try to second guess your dog don't look at your dog and say oh well he's the, trust your dog and you know it, t it takes a while to get that through and I, obviously that's you know when you're watching work for uh narcotic odor or anything mm -hmm. like that but it it plays through for everything trust your dog so if if you run into track and that dog starts acting funny and acting like you know Dogs are predators. They right. understand the the, the, the food chain. How they want to look at it. They understand if there's something in there that's higher on the food chain than them, and they don't want to go in there. So mm -hmm. you, as a handler, knowing that behavior, I, I'm I'm not I'm not going somewhere like that. Unless, I mean, unless I got the big girl with me, and you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I, I got you there. And it's just it's something I I, I pointed out before on the show. That I was never a dog handler. I mean, you know, I'm not. I want to make that clear. I was never a dog handler, but I've worked with guys who were, and uh, those dogs that are that are that are trained to track, to chase chase to, to chase down suspects or to look for missing people. Those dogs live for the track. That's what they mm -hmm. do. And when they refuse to tra to track something, that's a problem. That's it means there's something nasty out there. Yeah, I, I firmly believe in trusting your dog, and if I'm not going to say that I wouldn't go on somehow or another because, you know, that would be my job, but I'm going to pay attention to what that dog's telling me. So, yes, I totally agree with you on that. I, I just wanted to pick your brain on that. I mean, you know, we're separate parts of the country, similar experience, similar life experiences. Both of us spent a lot of uh, most of our adult life in law enforcement in one capacity or another. I just wanted to know how you felt about, about the tracking dogs. Uh, Doc, did you work with military dogs? I did not. I did not. I've got a good buddy of mine, retired team guy that was a handler. And, uh, you know, he was he basically what what Robbie said, same thing, you know, listen mm -hmm. to your dog, uh, you know, because they're, you know, they're, they're trained to hit on explosives, things like that. Um, and they know, they know when something's not jiving. They, like, like Robbie said, they, 
they know what pecking order they're in and uh whether it's bear or big cat something like that they're not going in the same thing that trent my buddy told me he said look he said I, he said my dog my dog saved me several times saved me and our and our, my team several times so hey, listen to your dog that's right yep we've uh i i live in town now i used to live out grew up in the country but we, we uh we've had a couple of times in the last six months where I'm, I'm a night owl. I, I stay up late riding. I would go to let my little idiot dog Harley out. And there are nights when he will not leave the light of the back porch. He will go up, go do his business and shoot right back in the house. And it's not often, but it is weird that he, because normally as yeah. soon as that back door is open, because we've got a big backyard, he's all the way at the back of the yard, sniffing around, chasing rabbits, looking for crap. He's always out there doing something, but the nights when he won't leave the light, it, it's always weird. You know, I've never been able to spot anything, but uh, and, and again, it's in town, so God knows what it might be. But he uh, he he just periodically, for whatever reason, he will not leave the light. <clears throat> and I've I've uh, I've learned to trust him. <laughs> He's a pretty good judge of character for a little uh, idiot. You know, like when we you know we do a lot of I don't know if how you guys do it in South Carolina. We have a lot of hogs in Florida especially in Palm Beach. And I would hunt hogs with, with dogs. We have two catch dogs and two bay dogs. And there'd be numerous times that we hunt with a bunch of guys, you know, in their swamp buggies and everybody camp out. Their dogs be missing for two, three, two, three days. And then the next day or the following week, they find the dog with their neck snapped. Now, what's snapping dogs necks? It ain't a bear because we only have black bear in Florida. Um, but... No bite marks, no, it wasn't torn apart. This neck was just broken, totally broken. And they had tracking collars on them, so they would track them. And you know, my buddy, my, my other buddy, Mike, man, he's like, My dogs would never go through that nasty shit <clears throat> to run after a hog. There's no way they, they would just stop right at the water line. And then five, five miles in, you know, you pick it up, and there they are, and you're like. You know, he's like, why would they run in here? You know, I know my dogs. They wouldn't do it. You know, it's, it's, I know, like my two, my two, that's what I, that's what that I have with me now. That's what they were. I, I kept them when I, when I moved here to Ocala, I mean, they don't hunt anymore, but like you said, when he gets up and his hair stands up in the bedroom, looking out the window, there's somebody out there. There's something going on. He goes right out the front door. I let him out. I let him have it, you know. I like he like you said. You got to trust them. I don't go well. Maybe it's a cat. Maybe no. You know, it's like they they're very susceptible to these dogs for some reason. Like DA says, they're not tracking. You know, they're killing these dogs. Or whatever they're doing, like that. What? Where was that? They ripped a the horse apart. Where was that? Where did that happen, Doc? Or you were talking about that? Which one? Trying to remember that. The, 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 got the horse the lip the, no that was Jesus that was talking about it it was down in New Mexico that a, a horse had, had a tine leg ripped off by something yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that was New Mexico how the hell do you rip a horse's leg off not easily really. <laughs> ain't too easy yeah. last time I checked so you know, people can I, uh, they want to I just did a quick search and this is according to the Missouri State Highway Patrol that there is currently 629 active missing persons in the state of Missouri. Damn. That's a lot. And that's just for this week. I'm sure that changes daily, but right at the moment, according to the Missouri State Highway Patrol, there's, uh, Highway Patrol, there's, there's 629 active cases, and those are the ones reported to Missouri State. Those aren't ones that are reported to the, you know counties or municipalities. I got to answer this question. Yes, there are. There have been accounts of grizzly bears in Mexico. They're called silverback grizzlies. They're called Mexican grizzlies by these ranchers. Me and DA were talking. I think we were talking about it, DA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, their their grizzlies been seen in Colorado, so you know that you know Colorado borders yeah. on New Mexico. So yeah, there are accounts by these ranchers that they're killing their their uh, livestock and stuff. Um, they were supposed to be extinct. The last bear was supposed to be shot in 1962 or 68. 
Um, but there's accounts of these ranchers saying that they're still out there. But a, a bear, you would know if a bear killed the dog or ripped the horse apart. So, you know, especially a grizzly. Uh, what else? I'm going through the comments here. Yeah, I was kind of check, uh, watching the comments too. Well, I know grizzly bears, you know, will will attack people. That you know, that's that's documented. Grizzly bears have also been known to kill kill livestock, mm -hmm. uh, especially you know if they're hungry or it's close to hibernation time. But grizzlies are far more aggressive than their their smaller black bear cousins, uh, and it's not something I'd want to run in. I'd want want a something of fairly large caliber like a four fifty eight SOCOM or a, or SOCOM or a bale. You know, I don't. I don't think I'd trust my two twenty three to try to take out a grizzly unless I get unless I did a mag dump, and then maybe yeah, they, not even then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they got grizzlies in California now. They're they're seeing grizzlies in California. They're coming back. You know. Well, so. with with the thing, the thing is, is with the, the black plague of the twenty first century, the big COVID, with that. So many people were staying home and staying out of areas that wildlife has started making a big comeback. Yeah, uh, a lot of places that that we were frequenting constantly, people didn't go to for the longest time, and now we're we're seeing a lot more wildlife in places yeah. we didn't see them before. I mean, just a couple of days ago, my son and I were driving through town, and I had to brake to avoid a deer, and this was in the middle of town. Uh, and it's not uncommon to see deer not too far from my house in some of the little wooded areas around here. But for to see one like on one of the main streets of town is <laughs> is kind of surprising. It was a good sized doe. If if I'd have hit her, it would have done a lot of damage. Well, it, it you gotta think people weren't out weren't out hunting. Mm -hmm. They weren't like you said. They weren't going so. Like Lance and I were talking about on the on the podcast, you know, animals know what time of year they're being pressured or what. You know what day of the week they, they know that stuff and if there's not a human presence and there's there's a time when they go for a while it doesn't take them long to get back into that oh i'm 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 good i'm yeah yeah it, uh, and yeah it's anybody that's ever deer hunted will tell you you know you can go out on a plot of a plot of land a week before deer season and see deer everywhere but they but opening day there's not a one to be found Exactly. Yeah, they got they got an internal clock. They, I, it got it. Like, be. oh, it's deer season. <laughs> yeah, gotta be. Time to be somewhere else. Yeah. And I think you know what what we're seeing is a lot more. If you if you look at the at the uh, the sightings databases and and accounts that are people are putting up online, that we're seeing an increased number of cryptid encounters as well. And I think that may have something to do with it along the lines. They follow the big game. Um, mm -hmm. And and. Because, you know, even in a city the size of Springfield, Springfield's the third largest metropolitan area in the state of Missouri. Now, granted, you compare that to, like, L.A., it's a drop in the bucket. But for Missouri, it's a good-sized city. And for us, you know, in, in the city of Springfield, for people to be picking up mountain lions and black bears on ring doorbell cameras, that's something. Mm -hmm. That's significant. Right. So, which means, so it means if those kind of predators are coming closer to town, what else is coming closer to town? You know, we just had a black bear here, and you know we're you know right in the driveway. I was just telling Da a couple of weeks ago. You know, it was in the back of the truck because we we've got to you know take our garbage to the dump here. And uh, my neighbor's driving down the road about ten thirty. Calls me, calls my, me and my uncle. He's like, "Hey man, there's a giant five hundred pound black bear in the back of your truck." I'm like, "What?" You know, we haven't seen a black bear around here in years. You know, it's like when I walked out. I mean, this thing, to me, looked like a grizzly. I've never seen a black bear this big. It was massive. And we're, you know, this house is all around here. But as soon as you go down the street, in about two or three miles, you're in the forest. You know, so they're going to come into the suburbs, like DA said. You know, I mean, they're getting closer and closer. Well, there you go, right uh, okay. Diana Pickett, Prickett says, uh, South Carolina currently reporting 184 missing persons, not sure of the accuracy. And Missouri was reporting over 600, 629. Well, here, here's the thing about that. Yeah, 99% yeah, of them are probably, you know, some sort of crime involved. It could be, you know, they could have been abducted, human trafficked, as bad as that is to say it's true. 
Uh, they, you know, could have been, you know, a gang violence. They killed the killed them and dumped the body somewhere. But even if one percent of those of that number is being taken by some sort of cryptid, that number is still alarming because it means there's a chance. Uh, John Doe says, as has been stated by Dion and other shows, reported missing people numbers only cover reported missing people. Yeah, you've got fringe society people like homeless people or people that live, you know, that live away from everybody that, you know, don't come to town very often. If somebody like that goes missing, if it's a whole, in the case of a homeless person, it may not even go reported at all. No, it's, it's, I mean, one thing I noticed here in Missouri is there's a, a big reservoir that they use for the, the drinking water for most of the city of Springfield. It's called Fellows Lake. It's owned by the local utility corporation. And years ago, when I worked uniform security, I used to patrol that lake at night. Um, when I patrolled that, oh, God, this would have been 2002, 2003, somewhere around in there. When I patrolled that, just down from the lake in this big stand of trees was a was a large homeless camp. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it was there for years. County knew about it. You know, even when as a cop, we knew about it. And um, it, it was it wasn't like they were hurting anybody. They were away from town. There weren't a lot of houses out there. So this camp had been there for years. Uh, wife and I went out driving out there out by Fellows Lake a few about a month ago. That camp's gone completely. Not a trace of it. Just the same thing out here in the woods. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes me wonder what made them move because I don't think. In anything with county policy changed. I don't think Green County has been going out there trying to run anybody off. It's and and it was not a small camp. You know, probably 70, 80 people. So for that camp to just vanish completely, I mean, even the even all sign of it was gone. Hey, Da, yeah. Lance wants to, he wants me to or wants your opinion on government, especially local government, DNR, sheriffs, etc taking an active role in covering up or concealing the existence of some of these creatures from the public. I probably are. I think I got to know your books and how you, <laughs> I think I know what your opinion is, but I think it does actively happen, um, it it, it, but it doesn't happen at Robbie and my level. It, you know, Sergeant and below doesn't happen. You know, we, you know, we might get told, Hey, this is the official story. You shut your mouth. This didn't happen. Well, but, we're not the ones trying to cover it up. We file our report. We take our call. We go. We report what we saw, and it's above our pay grade up in the admin that decides to shut it up. Now, be that because they got pressure from a government agency or they just decided they didn't want the bad press, I don't know. I can't say. I, I was never an admin officer, never wanted to be an admin officer. Same here. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not a blue falcon, if anybody knows what that phrase means. <laughs> Bravo. So, I mean, put it like Robbie, put it like this. There have been plenty of times I've talked to wildlife officers that are no longer wildlife officers no more, and they go, "Yeah, they're out there," and, and they fear, and they tell you. I mean, I'm not going to give out his name, but they'll tell you, "Hey, man, we couldn't even mention it because you know it, the the ridicule that they would get." Uh, from the department, especially FWC. Let's put it like this. If you're putting no hunting swamp apes in your brochures from FWC, come on. I mean, well, really. I Ohio Department of Natural Resources did the same thing. Exactly. You know, and and that, brought, that brought, uh, brought out, you know, that, that kind of plays into this question from Ricky Sanders. You know, why are so many people so easily dismissive of cryptid, mm -hmm. especially relatively plausible ones with decent evidence like Sasquatch and cryptid hominids, etc. Why I don't know. Maybe it's because it's too much of a paradigm shift. They don't want to believe that the the monster stories they heard when they were kids might be real. Uh, like or said, maybe it's yeah. just they're, you're preconditioned in, in in this society to not believe anything that they might consider fringe science. I, I can't say with any degree of certainty why people are so dismissive of it, but I can tell you. And Anthony can tell you, people that don't believe that have a sighting, mm -hmm. it's like a paradigm shift. You can almost yeah. hear the pop and see the smoke come out of their ears. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was me. You know, they like then become them. they then become the staunchest advocates to get mm -hmm. people to understand what's going on and that this is out there. I mean, myself, did I have an encounter? I don't know what it was back in you know when I was in high school in Mississippi, but 
you know, I never have had anything like Anthony's had for sure, you know, or like Robbie had for sure. But I guarantee you, if folks had those encounters, they'd be a lot less dismissive uh, and 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 right. include include that into their uh, their their train of thought. Cowboys Five Rings says there are places areas up in Humboldt County here in Northern Cali. I will never visit. Too many missing people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like I said before. If the government came forward and said these things are these things do exist, look what would happen to the the lumber industry, the um the the national parks, camping, uh everything. Everything. It, it would it would devastate the economy, number one. Number two, everybody that you know that's a Christian and everything, your whole beliefs would have to be changed. It could be like, well, wait a minute. Right. You know, what are these things? You know, then, then religion would come into play. You know, it's like, it's not, they're not going to do that right now. You know, yeah. it, it, it all goes yeah. back to the whole high dollar. Yeah. yeah. And, I, I agree. And Dalton, money makes the world go round. General Dalton just said that. He said, follow the money, you know, and exactly. that's 100% here's, concur here's something that many levels. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, every level. Many here's levels. something that I've, I've always found kind of odd. And, and Robbie, I'm, you, I'm sure you've probably had a similar experience. Why is it that eyewitness testimony can send a man to prison for life, but it's not believable when you've got a credible witness that says they saw Bigfoot? Right. <laughs> can't answer that one. You, you, can send, you can send a guy to prison on an eyewitness testimony, but you get a credible witness that their story doesn't change, like you, Robbie, or like, like Anthony's story, the details don't change no matter how many times you hear it. That's a credible eyewitness story, but it's not believable because it has to do with that's, encrypted. That's because Anthony and I are crazy together, right, Anthony? Yeah, there we go. Not, yeah. We're all just crazy. I mean, if you, had, My if you wife had some, some doctor me. or lawyer or something that saw that saw a Bigfoot, you know, that's that's a lot more credible than Tweaky McMethy, you know, uh, <laughs> sitting there seeing it yeah. off the back of the back porch of his trailer already sparking up his aluminum foil. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's, you know, there, there are, and there, and that's the thing about it. And, and just because people have seen it, automatically they're pushed to the fringe, and mm -hmm. said, and their 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 encounters are discounted, just because people don't want to believe it because ignorance is bliss, man. And there's some of the happiest sons of guns out there. You know, you know, back in the day, it might have been the the guy in the bibbed overalls with the one. With no shirt on under the bibbed overalls, with one strap undone. Yeah, I saw that big foot. He was he's carrying a hog, running down through the holler. Yeah, that might have been back in the day, but you know we've got yeah. judges and lawyers and cops and park rangers and right. people that's, from that's all walks of life. Creek stuff right there. There we go. Right. There. That's, 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 that's a, kind of a quote of my my, my one of my cousins. So. That, that's, a, that's the same people they they uh, they put on the news after a tornado hits. You know so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that was that was actually a line in Legend of Boggy Creek. He was talking about he had two of my hogs up under each arm. He stepped over mm -hmm. the over the fence. He did. <laughs> he <laughs> he did. Head on the jug of my best shine. You yeah, can't I'm make that stuff up. It's cheap entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> but you got you got special op. You know you got you got you got guys coming from special operations coming forth, telling their stories that you know oh you know we had a team go out and hunt these things and you're like huh. You know, so it's like not just one guy. You got numerous guys that are telling these stories. You know, it's like, come on. It's like, wake up. You know, like, really. You know, I mean, just think about it. Would you take, Robbie, you take your, your grandkids out camping if, if the government had said, hey, by the way, we got a 10, 12-foot hominoid running around the woods out there. Um, sometimes it's aggressive. Sometimes it's not. But you can go at your own risk. You gonna take your grandkids? No. 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 Hell <laughs> Nobody no. else probably would either. Except exactly. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about. He wants I know, to I know something you would take is yeah. that picture you sent me. Exactly. <laughs> yes. I would take that. I would take that granddaughter with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a that's a great A bang bang right there. Mm -hmm. hey, did you send yeah. Anthony the picture? Yes, I did. What'd you think? Yeah, Anthony? Very nice. I'll send. I'll send it to you, Doc. All right. Yeah. yeah me, and, uh, get over there. You have to check your Facebook because I can't switch it over to my phone. All right. No worries. And and Werewolf said something funny. He said, "Hey, 
Real hillbillies knows what's going on in the woods, and that's a natural fact. Yeah, that's you fact. ain't wrong. Facts. That's a natural fact. They're they're more in tune with the woods than anybody. As my core prime, says, right. facts. Yeah, prime example. When we got back and we sat down by the fire, and we were, you know, me and my buddy were like, hey, listen, we seen something out there. Everybody knew what we were talking about. And I'm looking at him like, you guys, you guys, oh, yeah, they don't bother you. I'm like, what? How? Oh, they've been here for years, man. They're like Indians. They call them like a tribe of Indians out there in the swamp area out in Palm Beach. Hmm. I'm like, well, and you guys are okay with that. So, I think DA's got the, maybe not exactly how he wrote them in the book, but I, I believe that that's, mm -hmm. you don't just have no Harry and Henderson's. There's, You've got numerous, numerous yeah. clans, numerous tribes that you look got differently. From Harry and the Hendersons to whatever that thing was on that movie, uh, Abominable. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, Which I mean, hit that guy's face off, so it's probably a guck wiki. Right. I mean, even we had uh, William Nighthawk on. This guy's a Native American. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's the stories that were told to him from his grandfather and dad. You know, even Jesus, the stories that he gets from the Navajo reservation, you know, when he's out there. You know, it's like, how do you get these same stories and, you know, you're a thousand miles apart somewhere? Or It's like, come on. You know, they know what's going on around. And they know what's going on in this country and around the world. You know, so, you know, thousands of year old paintings on the cave walls of these things. But they don't exist. Okay. Got a comment here from, it says, it says Facebook users. It says, we were told by the forest rangers that when we went up to the pigeon range to get back down to the road and leave these rangers, when leave, these rangers were all carrying heavy caliber handguns. I recognized a 454 and a Desert Eagle 50. Those are some big handguns. And if if you're popping up in chat as Facebook user, if you will go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook and authorize StreamYard to use your profile name, then we'll be able to actually see who's making the comments. But if you're if you're watching this on Facebook, it doesn't always tell us who you are. Uh, the easiest way for anybody to watch the the this show is through the uh, YouTube channel, and uh, then you're you're eligible when we do giveaways and things like that. Um, so just go to youtubecom da roberts uh, Actually, it's da x machina. Uh, youtubecom da da x machina and and join and subscribe to the channel. That way we always see who you are and you'll be eligible for the giveaways. Sorry about that. Hey, and while, I, while I've got a, I've got a, a quick second here, let me uh, play a quick word from our sponsor, if you guys don't mind me taking a quick minute. Uh, actually, I've got to find the video because it's not in there anymore. Is, it, Dark Angel? Up, it. Is it that guy Dark Angel again? Yeah, it's strange. Wow, he, he, he really knows that. That damn dark <laughs> I gotta find it. I gotta re-upload the dang video. How about somehow it got deal. deleted? Damn it, Bobby. damn it, Bobby! I'm yes, saving them to get one of your kits put on my vest. By the way, right do what? Vest. I told Doc I was saving up to get one of his kits to put on my. Uh, oh yeah, those are the best kits ever, vest. bud. I appreciate it, man. I need to get out there and do a class for y'all. Hey, yeah, I, my chief's retired ATF. And he is all about training. So he would probably Ooh, love that. I'll send you my contact info in the send private chat. Yep. Send it to me. We got awful quiet here all of a sudden. I, 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 yeah, he's looking for your ad there. I think. <laughs> yeah, it somehow got deleted off the channel. Oh, Ooh, really? No. no. It's all good. Wait a minute. Hey, you this is Kerry Pocket Doc Davis from Dark Angel Medical, and you are listening to DA Ex Machina with DA Roberts. You may recognize me or some of my products from Dark Angel Medical in some of the Apex Predator, Lakeview Man, and Wild Hunt books, and you can get those products at www.darkangelmedical.com, along with training classes on how to use those products and save a life. Shoot us an email at info at darkangelmedical.com and be the difference. And if you want to get a Dark Angel medical kit for be, be it cryptid hunting, actual hunting, going to the range, camping, fishing, whatever you whatever you're doing in the outdoors, 
when you're away from basic 911 services. You can go to darkangelmedical.com and use the code CRYPTID25 for 25% off your entire order. And if you're ordering one of the new spear kits, which are badass, by the way, if you order one of the new spear kits and you put into the comment section either Team Odin or Codename Wild Hunt, you'll get the Team Odin rocker with, with the medical patch. Yes, sir. And if you ever use one of your kits to save somebody's life or your own, just send us some documentation and we will you send us back what you did not use, obviously, because that's just gross. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll inspect it uh, and uh, make sure it's still serviceable and repack what you uh, used and ship, uh, seal it up and send it back to you free of charge. Kit for life guarantee. And I just uh, sent a tourniquet and some hemostatic gauze and a pressure bandage back for three different saves that we got just in the last two weeks, which is pretty awesome. Um, somebody wants to know if it ships to Australia. Unfortunately, it does not because of our distributor agreement with Quick Clot. Sadly, I wish it did. I mean, if you know somebody in the States and wants to order one and wherever they ship it, that's their business. You know what I'm saying? So, but I can only ship CONUS, continental United States. That sucks. I'm sorry. Oh, well, it is what it is. They're still damn fine kits. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yep. Hey, it's good enough for Will Gray Eagle and Daniel Clark. It's good enough for anybody. <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's right. That is correct. <laughs> Thought I had to throw that in there for you, Dave. <laughs> Appreciate it, brother. I, uh, hey, for those uh, of you uh, out there who don't know who those characters are, <laughs> read DA's books and you'll find out. That's right. I, I thought it was uh, well, funny what we were talking about. Uh, before we went on the air, that you come the comment made you made about bloody uh, blood moon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, for those of you who haven't read it, I don't want to spoil it, but it was it was it was a pretty pretty funny comedy. He cracked me up. I didn't even. It was one of those lines I didn't even really realize. I it wasn't intended to be funny. It just happened to be. Funny. It's not going to be funny to anybody except those of us that are like minded in this. Us sickos. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't like a sick, but it was just one of those things. I, I told him it was like a Mitch Hedberg thing. It's one of those that goes over here and then comes right back and hits you in the back of the head when you're not expecting it. Yeah, I'll, st I, I'll when I respond to your private message or your contact, I'll tell you which line I'm talking about, Doc. Okay, right on. Looking to see if I missed any questions there. Sorry about that. Okay, well. <laughs> William Nighthawk says, "Does that make me a hillbilly or an Indian?" Well, I, I, I think you're. I think you qualify as both, brother. <laughs> I think you're a hillbilly Indian, William. <laughs> there we go. Uh, well, anyway, we'll uh, we'll get back to the subject at hand, which is uh, you know we kind of tend to ramble off topic once in a while, but um. <laughs> Every now and then. <laughs> we, that was, we used to say that at the academy when we were trying to sit there and study. We'd say, snow is piling. We're drifting. <laughs> Absolutely. Very much so. It happens all the time. But, um, you know, I want to kind of jump back on your on your podcast there. Uh, I know you've just got the one episode out, and it is, a, it is a solid episode. You guys did a really good job. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that. But I think um, – I think you know you guys kind of have a very kind of no nonsense approach to it, but at the same time, since uh, Lance is not you know firmly in the believer category, you're also kind of looking at the other side of the coin of what else it could it be, and I like that approach because you know it, it you, you get certain shows like I won't name it because my wife gets after me for for you know going out for calling people out so I won't name the show but you know you'll hear like a coyote and they'll go oh huh, do you hear that that's a coyote that's a bigfoot that's a bigfoot sound like a coyote no it's probably just a coyote yeah Can I call them out I'll call them out yeah I, yeah I mean you think about it man these, these a lot of these folks are in their own echo chamber and when you have someone who is uh, not a believer you know yet or maybe never will be, it throws in a fair degree of skepticism, which leads to some good, solid, critical thinking, which can lead to debunking stuff instead of just going for sensationalism, like a lot yeah. of these, a lot of these things go for. And I, I find that a lot more credible than 
some of this, like you said, oh my God, what is that? Oh, dude, it's a coyote. Yeah. Chill out. All right. You know? There was a podcast I was watching, and, I, and again, I'm not going to call anybody out by name. I'm not going to bust anybody out. But the, a lady called into the show, and it was, you know, you could see when they were recording, it was broad daylight. There was daylight coming through the window behind the guy. And uh, she was saying she was afraid she had a Bigfoot in the wood behind, woods behind her house. And you could hear a bird in the background. And he's like, you hear that? That's a Bigfoot trying to sound like a bird. I'm like, or it's just a bird. <laughs> it, it's broad daylight. There's a bird outside her window. That it's, you know, if the obvious answer is it's a bird, it's probably a bird. And, yeah. uh, that's yeah, that's why. Let's go with Occam's razor, man. This, the, the, yeah, I mean, that's just it right there. Simplest answer is usually the right yeah, point. Lance says you need to call him Fox Mulder because he wants to believe. There we go. <laughs> does, that make, does that make you scully? Like uh, well, I don't know. My beard maybe. No, nah, my hair's not yeah. long enough to be scully. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. That one show that's on, um, I think it's the Discovery, not the Snow Travel Channel, is... Um, they're, so far, they've gotten a lot of good evidence. They got video, night vision. I mean, of an upright thing running through the. You could see it in their night vision, in their uh, thermal. Uh, Is that Expedition yeah. Bigfoot? Yes, yes. Yeah, with Josh Gates. No, no. What Expedition Bigfoot's? Uh, I can't remember. It's got the two that camp out together mm -hmm. to do the research, and another guy that's a former right. police officer. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I've seen that one. Yeah, that's that some different. really good evidence. Of, really? All, of all of the ones out there right now, that's really the only one I, I kind of have any credence with. Uh, there are some of the others that are uh, others are just like, well, there's a particular ghost show that I, I always quote because, and I'm not going to say the name of it. You guys are going to know exactly which one I'm talking, I'm talking about. I know who you're talking about. Because at some point, the main guy is going to make this, use this phrase, just then, at that exact moment, and then yeah. the ball is going to run over the cameraman and freak out. That's going to yeah. happen every episode. You know, it's all about, like they said, money, 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 money. Well, it. you know, it's like we talked about last time, the Ames team. <laughs> <laughs> Pure entertainment, that's great. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Some of these shows are just entertainment. If, yeah. right. if Josh Gates, with all the money on Expedition Truth and all that stuff, he goes out there. And he can't get any more evidence than normal. Mm -hmm. These four, four or five hillbillies out there <laughs> making know, traps right? out of bamboo. Yeah. We we caught him. Yeah. <laughs> but he uh, got Ricky out. San Ricky we'll Sanders says, how do we explain people who've had multiple cryptid sightings across their lifetime? They say such people have a mentality or energy about them that makes them more prone to encounters. I, you know, and, and this might be just, you know, an oversimplification of it. Uh, but, you know, uh, we um, we recently, well, back in December, we uh, replaced our vehicle that was destroyed in November. We bought a Nissan Rogue. And you know, bear with me, this, this does have bearing on it. Until we bought one, I don't think I ever noticed a Nissan Rogue on the road. Just didn't yeah. pay any attention, never noticed one. Now that I drive one, I see the damn things everywhere. And I think that's kind of like that with a Bigfoot sighting. It's not that you're... You're suddenly seeing more of them. You're just aware of them, and you're noticing the details. So I think people who have had multiple sightings uh, aren't necessarily any more in tuned uh, or anything along those lines. It's when when you don't pay attention to something and you don't believe it's there, you're not going to see it. It's until you have that moment when it's like you can't deny it. There it is, yeah. and suddenly you're looking. Your mind, your subconscious mind, is now looking for those signs, and you start to see things you would have missed otherwise. Yeah, that I think that's what it is. Syndrome. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that I think that's the case. I, again, folks, I, I make no claims of being any kind of expert on this subject. Anybody that, that claims to be a, be an expert on Bigfoot or Dogman or they claim to be an expert on any cryptid, they're full of crap and they're trying to sell you something. There are no experts in this field and anybody that says otherwise is lying and trying to sell you something. Yeah, it's like selling you snake venom. That's exactly what they're doing. Snake oil. Yeah, that's all it is. Same thing. You know, it's like once you see one crackhead, you know what you're seeing the next time. You know, it's like, come on. You know exactly how to spot it. Well, you, you know, know, that's whenever I go out in the field, that's I, I look for what it could be. 
I, I, you don't go to every situation. I don't go in every place thinking this is where I'm going to find Bigfoot. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to find tracks and tree breaks and get a picture. No, I go out looking to find out what it could be before you can call it a cryptid. Because nine times out of ten, somebody claims they saw something weird on the property. It's probably something that can be explained. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, no matter what the the media might want you to think, Bigfoot is not hanging from every tree branch or peeping in every window. Yeah. Sometimes it's, you know, the, the, the two-legged weirdo that you're seeing is the neighbor. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they get snatched by the Bigfoot after he runs away from the police. Yeah. <laughs> what Don't movie? worry, we got that movie? That was in a movie. That was in a movie. No, that, 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 was, that was in Lakeview, man. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. That's right. <laughs> Oh God! Come on, Anthony. I've been throwing out these little. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, hey, I'm I would like that. to see that scene filmed. I really would. This dude's I, just hauling I, ass through the woods, and this big hairy arm just grabs him and yanks him into the bushes. Dude, I mean, if 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 I won the lottery, I would make that happen just to see those. That, that, that those that would just be awesome. I would I would love to see that on a big screen. Because I, I know how I see it directly in my head. This <laughs> poor guy did, didn't even have time to scream. Yeah, no, he's running out. He's looking up. Ha! I beat him. And run, turns right back around. I, I can see that. He ran into karma. Yeah. Karma That's snatched him away. Karma. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it is. It's a big industry, man. You know that. I mean, it's, Absolutely. you know. Anybody's gonna, they're gonna, if you, they can make money off of it, they're gonna do it. Right. Um, you know, like I said, until you have a body in front of somebody or on TV and somebody goes, Yeah, this is real, I think that's all gonna be, that's gonna be all out the window. That's, that's it. All these shows, all these researchers that are out, that's it. It's done. You'll never see another YouTube channel on it or them running through the woods or doing crazy stuff anymore once well, somebody gets a body you're, you're exactly right Anthony. because this is like we were talking about earlier i mean how much money is bigfoot making the discovery channel and youtube and Do you really want to know i could no, call i could call somebody right now and he'll probably give me a straight answer and da knows exactly who i'm talking about and, and that's what that's what i'm saying if he became Right. If he became known, and it was like, it's kind of like the uh, the Jurassic Park thing. If you watch from the, the first three movies, it's like, ooh, ooh. Ah, ah, ah. But once they get to the Jurassic World, it's like people have like, oh, well. You know, oh, yeah. Sort of, it's just a T-Rex. Yeah, just oh, a T-Rex. Yeah, yeah. Th so they got to make something bigger and better to keep people in the park. It's the same thing. I mean, if people knew that Bigfoot was there, like those of us who who do know, it'd be uh, well. There, there's another Bigfoot over there. <laughs> yeah, it would, oh, yeah. It, would, it would lose its mystique, man. It really yeah, would. It would. It would. You know, I mean, then they'll have jeep rides and you know through the woods. Oh, there it is, right there. Look, they've, they've got yeah. that down in, in Branson. They, they've no, got they this. got it. They got it here in Ocala. Do you take these like these like Australian yeah. bush looking trucks that you can I ride know. in the back in these benches I'm and they drive up through these trails and they've got these silhouettes set up in the trees so people can get a glimpse of this Bigfoot silhouette. And it's all pretty even, cheesy, but uh there's a guy out here in Ocala, I'm not even gonna mention. Um he you gotta not pay, you have to donate to go for a ride with him, like you're going through Jurassic World. It's like, come on, man. I mean, let's do it when I come down to Florida in October, man. Come on, let's do it. Come to Missouri, we can ride one in Branson. You can even play Bigfoot mini golf right there. In I can see me and Doc doing that when we're there videotaping it secretly. <laughs> Doc would be like, Are you guys, are you for real, man? Like, really? You know, no. me, I'd be like, Come on. I'm being you know. facetious. <laughs> I know. No, I would do it. You know, I don't care. I'd do it. I'd get in there with you. I don't care. Yeah, it. but it's, it is. I mean, it is, it's big money, man. And like like we've been saying, yeah. with all the money, it's big money right now. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, look. Look what they, they look, what, uh, um, what is it? Jack Lynx? I mean, mm -hmm. come on. Feed your wild side. Right. Yeah. 
you know, I mean, go, you, you got a product that you could sell. I mean, you know, yeah, come on. That's the American dream right there. Back when Jack first started that ad campaign with, you know, messing with Sasquatch, you could mm -hmm. go to the Jack Link's Beef Jerky website and they had a, a game, you could, a flash game you could play on, on the site. And it was Bigfoot playing baseball with all manner of crap being thrown at him, like pine cones and beehives and even squirrels. You could uh, smack a home run with a thrown squirrel. I don't, I don't know if it go over too well today. But it was, it was just the most satisfying sound to hear that whack and hear this squirrel. You know, hey. They got one. Did you see the commercial where the guys put that giant paper bag full of shit and they burn it in front of the cave? And he throws the rock at their boat? No, it wasn't a rock. If you want, I'll send you the original video. They took it off, they took it off the air because people were offended by it. It was human feces in the bag and they lit it on fire. And he went out and stomped on it. And then these guys are running to the boat. Instead of the rock, it was that bag. And then you can see when it hits them, it goes all over them. It's all, it's all feces. Those commercials. Those commercials. Well, that, they had the other one where he, Bigfoot was sleeping, and they walked up and put his hand in the bag of water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's that scream about that either. big around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that yeah. one didn't last long either. I think I saw no. it twice. The commercials were the best. Yeah, that's you awesome. go on their website, you can pull it up. And I had it on Facebook, and they took it down. <laughs> I put it up there as a joke. It was just hilarious. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse Van Rensler says, can we have an experiment to get Bigfoot to eat some Jack Links, maybe some bacon jerky? <laughs> you know, if, if, if the commercials would be believed, that's all Bigfoot Bigfoot researchers really need is just a big bag of Jack yeah. Links. <laughs> that's the well, truth, though, man. Didn't Bobo say that Squatch liked bacon? I think yeah. Everybody that. likes bacon. Yeah, come on. I, I read somewhere yeah, yeah. somebody once said that every slice of bacon you eat takes a day off your life. If that was true, I should have died sometime in the late 1700s. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. here. Me too. I grew yeah. up on bacon. Yeah, it's it's a big business, man. That's what it is, exactly. You know, and everybody's like, "Oh, you're you got a YouTube channel. You're making thousands." Yeah, you think so, huh? No. Yeah. No. I mean, I'm a, I mean, Anthony, I'm a small business owner. Apparently, I'm a millionaire. You know? I mean, yeah, that, exactly. That's, that's, that goes along with the same train of thought. But yeah. That's I what mean, I mean. You know. And that's, I think that's why people like like this podcast so much is because we don't sit there and BS about stuff. We, mm -hmm. we, we look at the evidence and weigh out different things. And it's real. It's not sensationalized. It's real. And if you come on here and you're a skeptic, that's cool. Your opinion is is welcome, just like anybody else's is, you know. And that's as long as you keep everything civil, then that's what everybody. That's what it's all about. It's about a good a good debate, a good discourse. But, uh, yeah, amongst, absolutely. You know, that's what it's about. Yeah, that's all it is. I mean, it, it's money. It's just it's like you know, like you're gonna sell a car or you're gonna sell a house. You got to sell it. That's that's how it is. So. Uh, that's fine. Robbie, now I know how things would have went with my department, but if you if you were to go get dispatched on a call tomorrow, you went to went, say you went to a residential area somewhere on a rural setting, and they they reported a prowler. You grab your flashlight, you get out of your patrol car, you start around the back of a house, and you illuminate a nine and a half foot hairy monster. How's that going to go in your report? Well, first off. You know, Chief calls me one. I know I'm not putting it in a report because <laughs> yeah. I used to have a dog, so obviously he he calls me Wolf Tamer. He'd say, "Well, I think it's time to put Wolf Tamer out to pasture because he's done <laughs> lost it." Yeah, but uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I I don't know. I mean, my sergeant and I have had this discussion, and he's one of those that is like Lance. He says, I want to believe that it's real. So I would probably, he would probably be the first one that I would call and say, um, how you want me to write this report, Sarge? Right. Because uh, honestly, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I'd write that report. Yeah. I, I'm not, I don't think I would put that detail in. I would, I would just say saw uh, an unknown figure <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Um, oh, hey, Lene just gave us a super chat. Thank you. Thank you, Lene. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Um, 
I think you know if I if I had gone to a call like that and had to put that in a report, it probably just would have been you know a possible animal something like that. I would yeah. never have described exactly what I saw. You know, just yeah. reduce it to a flash of dark fur, probably, most likely a bear, uh, because yeah. you know, otherwise you you know the next day you're going into pee in a cup and get a psyche valve. Yeah, yeah. And the best thing to say is dispatch show me ten eight. Yeah. yeah. Show this one handled HBO. Yeah, I'm back in service. <laughs> this is going to HBO this call and be on our way. In my area, that would be signal four. Subject gone on arrival. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 10 X signal four. Just I mean, take I, one HBO this call. We're not, there's no report needed. We're out of here. I mean, you got, I mean, you live, uh, you work in what, like a, 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 like a metropolis area, Robbie, or no? Is it more oh, like it, a suburb? In the city, but it's definitely not a metropolis area. It's, I mean, we got about probably ten thousand people in the city, which is okay. pretty small. Um, I mean, it, it's not the smallest city in the county mm -hmm. by any means, but it, it's it's fairly small. All right, so you're a city, you're you're city PD then. Yeah. Okay, and then outside the city, you have the sheriff's department. Right. Okay. Have you talked to any of those other guys that you're friends with or anything like that about the subject? Or no? <clears throat> some of uh, some of the ones that I knew years ago, yes. Right. Most of those guys, you know, like me, are the dinosaurs and they're on their way out. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the newer ones, I I used to could tell you name everybody on every team at the right. sheriff's office. I could start with the last man on the totem pole for, for every team, all four teams, and name everybody. Now, I can maybe name 10 guys, and yeah. they're all in the rotation that I'm on. Right. right. That's how it is here. Same thing. Well, when I, when I started at county, they don't recycle DSNs, department serial numbers. They don't recycle them. Mine was 600. They're currently at, like, 1,800. What? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, there's been a lot of rotation of officers. Uh, if I went went up to the went up the sheriff's department today, and I've only been out of there just a few years, I, I guarantee I'd only recognize a tenth of the people that are there. They just hemorrhage people. This is a, not a good time for people to be in law enforcement, and people are taking yeah. early retirement, mm -hmm. taking other jobs. It's and it, it's sad because you know there's it's what's ruining it from all law enforcement is a small number of people. And I'm not going to name anything because I don't want to get political. I don't want to. I I, that's not what the point of this show. We don't do politics or or go get uh, get big into religion or anything like that because it tends to piss people off. But on one side of the coin or the other, but there is there's a small percentage of law enforcement that gives all of us a bad name, and nobody hates a bad cop worse than a good cop. Yeah, you know that absolutely. And there's and there's far more good ones and bad ones, and unfortunately, the bad ones are the ones that get the get the bad PR to everybody. Absolutely. But you know, back to what, what I was talking about, about the reports, you know, even, even if you've got a, you know, a shift sergeant or a shift supervisor, you can call and say, Hey, this is what I saw. Um, even they're going to tell you, don't put that in the report. And, yeah. and it's not that they're trying to cover it up. It's because when, believe it or not, Reports written by patrolmen get read by senior senior staff. Mm -hmm. Not all the time. I mean, you know, they 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 spot check them. But if well, your, your your report comes across a captain's desk and it said you saw a Bigfoot, somebody's going to get the whiz quiz and and, and get to go talk to the well, site. Not even talk. that. But uh, you know, we we use a system called Law Track, mm -hmm. um, and Law Track's tied into something called SkyX, which is tied into SLED. State mm -hmm. Law Enforcement Division for South Carolina. All our reports, unless it says for information only, all those reports go to SLED. So there's going to be some lieutenant or captain or wherever down in Columbia reading our report, and they're going to be like, same thing is. Yeah, same thing as Florida. Yeah. FDLE, I mean, F all the reports go through FDLE, right yep. through Tallahassee. So it's the same thing here. Um, and it, it's that's it. So, yeah, they're going to be like, hey, by the way, can you come to this hospital? We want to, you know, put this jacket on. Sleeves are a little long, but it'll be all right. You know, it's like, it, that's what they're going to do. Try this so, on, tell me how it fits. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know, it's like with DA7. When he was, when he was with them, you know, he, he was an officer. He never discussed it at all. 
you know, because of the way, you know, he didn't want anybody saying it. And I get it, and I, I fully understand that. You don't want to have your, your, your colleagues look at you and go, uh, yeah, he's a little bit nuts. Well, you I mean, if the, the wrong defense attorney gets a copy of that report and they'll exactly. destroy your credibility on the stand. Right. You know, I mean, so. And even, even just saying that you believe in something like that, because mm -hmm. now, uh, not just FOIA, but there's another one that they can go back and get anything that you've done. Yeah, it didn't even have to be about that particular case. Mm -hmm. It can go back whether you were at this department or another department. They can go back mm -hmm. and get everything that's got to do with you now. Yeah, and like he said, not just destroying the case, but destroying the reputation. Mm -hmm. and, when I we'd go when I was still active when I, when I would go to training seminars and stuff like that I would go all over the area to other departments are hosting this training or you know you you travel around and go you grab your your post hours where you can grab them and some of those training seminars are pretty cool like I did uh, I did some homeland security bomb bomb threat safety stuff and you'd have to go to like Kansas City or stuff for like that but I got to travel around quite a bit and go to training seminars. Um, and you would talk to these guys from these other agencies, and I made some pretty good friends. And uh, I, you know, sometimes I'd broach the subject with people, and sometimes I wouldn't. But I collected some good Bigfoot stories from other cops who said, who basically prefaced it with like, "Don't ever say this was me, but this is what happened." Yeah, because they don't they don't want to go on the record for it. I mean, it's like you said, it you know, it comes back to them challenging your credibility on the witness stand, and that kind of thing can destroy your career. For instance, one guy I know uh, who was uh, he was a uh, deputy down near Table Rock Lake. Uh, he uh, reported that he went deer hunting. He told me the story. He went deer hunting, and he dozed off in the deer stand, and he had his lunchbox up in the deer stand with him. And he said he woke up, felt like something was tugging on his lunchbox. And he opened his eyes and looked down, and it was like right about knee level looking at him trying to take his lunchbox. I said, what would you do? He said, well, I gave him the damn lunchbox. <laughs> and... Uh, I, I, well, so while I imagine, I said, did you stick around deer hunting? He goes, no. He says, if you want that deer stand, I'll tell you where it's at, but I ain't going back out there. He uh, he sold his deer hunting equipment, never went deer hunting again, and it wasn't four or five months later that uh, he, he gave up being a cop, and I asked him why, and he said, because I'm scared to death every time I go to a prowler call or a disturbance call that it, that's what I'm going to see, and I don't want to see it again. Yeah. Yeah. It affects people different ways. Some people, it just you know, had I had my encounter when I was older and my brain was an adult brain and processed things different, uh, you know, I don't know how it would have affected me. It would, might would have affected me differently. I, I don't know. But, you know, at being the age I was and having plenty of time to process it, cause, you know, mm -hmm. back then, like we talked about before, there was not a lot of shows on about you got to see in search of every once in a while. Right. Every once in a while, you got the Bigfoot episode. That, you know, Bigfoot or Loch Ness, that was the two that I kept watching the reruns for is to see those. Right. Yeah, those about the only ones, ones you saw <laughs> back then. Well, it's like, you know, we had Dave, we had, uh, we had a high check on here, okay? And he was the producer for that. Um, Monster Quest. Monster Quest. Uh, down to earth guy, nice guy, you know. And even when he was out there, I mean, he was in a remote cabin in Alaska. I mean, you had to go in by a plane, okay? And he had uh, Dr. Uh, excuse me, people. Meldrum? Is that who it was? The, the one that does the feet? Uh, he was up there. They were getting rocks thrown at them. Oh, and, that's Snail Grove Lake that you're talking about. Right. So yes. when we had him on, you know, he was like, hey, listen, you know, I can't explain what happened. You know, uh, you know, even the DNA sample when they put the wood down with the with the screws. You know, there were certain things popping up when they were out there. They were like, "Listen, there's no one around." You know, I mean, you're in a remote area. There's no one around. You got to get in by a plane, in the, in the lake. So how do you, you know, you're not going to hoax something like that. I mean, and you got this doctor's reputation on the line. You know, it's bad enough that you know that you know they 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 say things about him, and he and he's he's a really nice guy, 
um, you know, you're putting your reputation on the line about all that. You know, so I mean, you know, I, I, I tend to believe what they're saying. I do. You know, there's no Native Americans out there screwing with them. A bear's not going to pick up a rock and throw it on the roof. You know, there's no squirrels that are going to do it. You know, so I mean, you know, he, he's doing what he has to do, and I get it. And, and, he, at least he's putting the information out there. You know what I'm saying? He's making people aware, like we're doing, like you're doing, Robbie. It, 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 it's just, you know, it's, like I said, you're going to get people that are going to hoax. You're going to get people that are going to, you know, just as a money pit. You know, they don't care. They don't care. When you get one hoax, and it ruins the whole community. Yep. I mean, look at that. Look at what his name did. And I'm, I'll am i say it, and I don't care. Uh, that guy that has the, uh, what is it, coyote? Okay, they found yeah, that skull. He found, the sc- he found the skull and it was fake. And everybody's like, oh, 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 it was Bigfoot. Oh, my God, look what they found. I mean, I'm not an expert. But I look right at it and I go, uh, that's a gorilla head. That's a gorilla skull. You could tell by the crest. You know, it's like, come on. You know, you're going to get a bad... You, it just puts a bad taste in everybody's mouth, you know, and then it makes me look like a kook, you know, and it makes you look like a kook, you know. Well, Anthony's full of shit. Robbie's full of shit. They didn't see that stuff. They're all nuts. So, you know, it is what it is. It's just like the UFO thing that, that you know, the government finally came out and admitted because you had Navy pilots coming out and saying, hey, listen, I know what I tracked. I know what I seen. You know, this is real. So, I believe it is going to come out eventually. Maybe not in our lifetime. But it, it'll it'll eventually hit. It'll come out. It will. They're going to have to. You know, they're going to have enough crazy people like me, you, and DA running around the woods. Somebody's going to get a body. It's going to happen. I, I still like our idea we talked about last time. The, doing our own version of Ames. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that'd be great if we could get a show, to, a, 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 a network to pick it up. Well, you know, that was not the only one. They had another show called Alaskan Monsters, which was almost identical. Yeah. They had, did you see that one? Yeah. They had a law enforcement guy, a scientist, and a tracker. Yep. And, and, that, and you know, to me, that was pretty good. It was a good show. It was. But Doc, like Doc said, would have to shave in order for us to be bald guys' investigations. Yeah. So. Well, you know, there's always one guy that's a little different from everybody else. Doc would just be our different guy. There we go. That's it. He'll come, he'll I, come, I know what it is. Oh. Doc is Doc is just so much shorter than us. His didn't thin from the altitude. That's right. <laughs> but gravity works with me if I fall because I have less kinetic energy built up. <laughs> there you go. It doesn't hurt oh. as bad. Doesn't hurt oh. as bad. Still hurts. I mean, I'm at the age now. If I sleep on a, if I sleep on the wrong pillow, I feel like I fell off a four-story building the next morning. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it used to be, you know, sleep. Rice Krispies is what I ate for breakfast instead of what I sounded like when I stood up. I've seen yeah, my uncle, hey, me and John. I've seen John sneeze and throw his back out. Me too. Just a chin go, oh, and you're down like for three weeks. I've seen yeah. that happen, man. Did that so, do that? Yeah. Just here and there, 66 <laughs> says, LOL, old guy's investigations. <laughs> we're here, we're cranky, get get Bigfoot off our lawn. That's it. <laughs> oh, yeah, goodness. I mean, yeah, there's a, I think it would I think it would sell. Sorry. That's all. I mean, look what they had. What was that one show? Bounty on Bigfoot. They went out with a million dollar bounty. Mm-hmm. They got these teams tracking these things. I never, never watched. Yeah, I didn't I never watch it watched. either. I mean, really? It's like. Well, the Cowboys Fiber says, was it Beans Baxter in law enforcement also? Yeah, he was. He was mm-hmm. uh, law enforcement up in Alaska. I need to get Beans back on the show. He was a good guest. Yeah. Interesting dude. Killing Bigfoot. That's what it was. Thanks, Trish. Now, can you Bigfoot. imagine if we were on that show? Listen, guys, we're going to send you out. They're going to have live live rounds. 
but you can't shoot it. <laughs> who, who will break a hip first? <laughs> you want my opinion on that? I, can, I was going to say B.A. He'd be the first one probably. I'm yeah. down. I'm down. Man yeah. down. Man down. <laughs> Anthony, you can see me in the woods in my tracking class, Anthony. I'm gonna bet on myself because it's like my brain said, "Hey, you used to could do this." My body yeah. said, Mm-mm, oh, I know. Not, "Not anymore. You can't." You know what they say: the number one leading cause of injury in old men is still thinking they're young men. Yeah, yeah. I was just I talking. My uncle was just talking about it. John, me and John were talking about it the other day. It pisses me off. Because yeah. I can't do what I used to do. I can't do it. I'm mean, there with you, man. We're not yeah, old. It really upsets me. You know, oh, if I could put uh, put the knowledge I have in my brain now in my 21-year-old body, I would be unstoppable. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh, so people ask me all the time, hey, would you like, Would you ever go back through high school? I said, as long as I can keep this the yeah. way it is yeah. now. Yeah. 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 yeah, I do a lot of, I do, I do a lot of things over different. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen my uncle, man, go from fishing, hunting with me, uh, to where he can't even walk from here to the bathroom. And, you know, and I know it upsets him. It pisses him off. And it, it bothers me, too. You know, it's like he, he's like he's been, you know, it's like my dad. You know, when I lost, you know, him and my dad were the closest people to me in my life. You know, and then seeing that happen. You know, him being indestructible, and then this going on with my uncle, it, you know, it affects you. It's like, you know, it, it pisses him off because he likes to go. We like to do things like fish, and he can't do it. Can't do it anymore now. You know, it's it upsets him. I get it. I do. You know, but we're all going to get there, and it's happening to us. So, yeah. you know. <clears throat> Yeah, I had to go we, uh, mm-hmm. last week and get the cortisone, cortisone shots in the old knees. I hear you. Steve Patton says, unable to locate 10 8. That, that kind of reminds me one night. You know, we used to be able to get away with doing awkward stuff on the radio. You, know, you really can't too much today because everything's recorded and repeated. Yeah. But back in the old days, you could get away with the occasional thing. And one, one night, someone had made a stop and they uh, were calling in the subject's name and said, first name Marco. So as soon as he kicked off, I grabbed the radio and went, oh, oh. and it was two seconds later, I heard my lieutenant voice, lieutenant's voice on the radio go, knock it off, 829. I'm like, how the hell did he know it was me? All I said was one word. Did you see I asked him that? later, I'm like, how do you know that was me? He's like, it's always you. Did you see where that one deputy fell asleep in his patrol car? Oh, that's happened before. No, and they videoed it. He was videotaping. That's happened before, too. (laughs) He was videotaping. It was so slow. He's like, I'm going to set my watch. And, you know, everybody, he's talking to his camera and everything. And you can see the sun come up, and he's like this. He's sleeping. He goes, I mean, he was like three hours late. And they didn't know where he was. It was hilarious. It was on YouTube. He had his own own channel. I don't know if he lost his job or not, this guy. But I was like, man, that's so wrong. I was like, come on. You know, he pulled him behind a warehouse and just sat there all night. There was nothing going on. No calls came in, nothing. I was like, wow. Can you imagine that? Where the hell have you been? Oh, sleeping? <laughs> you know. Josh Dalton says, you guys talk about reports going to the state capitol. Think they get it? visit from a cat me, cat team from Wild Hunt. <laughs> yeah. That's true. You never know, man. I'm like what I we said. need to do. We need to get an RV and equip it out with all kinds of investigative gear and get get cameras and just go film us going to places where they're always missing 411 cases and stuff. I think that'd be a hoot and a half. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. sure there's somebody out there who could donate all the stuff we need just just to see what kind of stuff we could come up with. I'd, we'd shoot a couple episodes and I'd get a hold of Doug Highcheck. I'm like, hey, is there a market hey. for this? You want to pick this up? <laughs> yeah. I got. I, I know. I know the guy. I just don't have the video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you'll have pictures of all of us on T-shirts. You'll be selling on. Uh, on uh, what is that? The shopping channel. You know. <laughs> yeah. New cologne by by Doc. You know. You know. 
It's O'Day looks, Ranger. Right. It looks like gun oil, but it isn't. You know, and you know. I used to tell my wife that if I could if I could bottle the smell of gunpowder on the firing range, I'd wear that as a cologne. She said, the hell you will. <laughs> Yeah. So I love that smell. Well, look at well, what's his name's doing that. Jesus is doing it with. He's getting the RV doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a smart move on his part. Oh, very. You know, <clears throat> he's doing it. I don't know that mm -hmm. I'd want to drive around in the an RV that looks just like yeah. the one from Breaking Bad, <laughs> and it's called a rolling PC stop. And what did he say? He got the he got the rock candy from the lady. It's, he's gonna put it. It looks just like the blue meth. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine getting pulled over by Highway Patrol. Can I search it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we got bags hanging off in the back. You'll be like, what the hell is this shit? You know, it's like, uh, oh, I could just see it. I said, you got a video. DA goes, you got to videotape it when it goes yeah. down. He goes, oh, I am. Trust me. You see that rolling down the highway. That's that's probable cause on the on the fly right, right. there. Oh, yeah. You know, I think I got a possible mobile meth lab. Uh, and then you see him walk out. What is he, a 6'4", six, 6'5"? Six, oh, yeah, he's, he's a big dude. Yeah, but it, it's like, Robbie, if you looked at him, you, I mean, you, you've seen Jesus. Yeah, I watched okay. the show the other night. Okay, when you see him all tatted up, teardrop, but then when he goes, by the way, I was in law enforcement, everybody goes, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> they go, what? <laughs> they go, you, you were what? what? Yeah, it's like, yeah, he goes, I'm not a gangster. I'm not a gangbanger like everybody thinks I am. You know, I was in law enforcement. That's what he did. I mean, he was work. He worked corrections. You know, so he, everybody looks at him the wrong way sometimes. Werewolf fifty six seventy four says, "I was responding to a motor vehicle accident and requested a city officer. He responded that he was in route, and you could hear his siren. Turned out he was parked with a siren on. <laughs> That's messed up. My son and I were in the drive through at McDonald's the other day." And there was what looked like I thought it was a, a patrol car behind us. And was we're waiting for an order, every once in a while he would like whoop whoop chirp his siren. I'm like, what is he doing? Is he in, in a hurry or something? Or, you know, because it was bumper to bumper. I thought maybe he's got a call and he's wanting me to get out that uh, move so he can get out. Well, I got my order and started to pull away, and he pulled out about the same time. It was a, a, a local security company, and my son and I just both started laughing. <laughs> he was just trying to show off. He actually wigged you at the at the at the drive thru Yeah, I'm like you moron. Very stupid, dumb, 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 dumb. I don't know what's out here. Let's see. Read your sounds. I'm looking for more comments here. Um. <laughs> Robbie, what's the what's the weirdest call you ever got? <laughs> no, okay, okay, we'll go, we'll make it creepy. I don't make it the creepiest call okay. as opposed to the weirdest call. As we, we don't need to be telling stories about naked guys and chainsaws. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony's like, oh, this is gonna get good. <laughs> yeah, like, mm. Yes, there's definitely a story there. <laughs> uh, let's see, creepiest. Put oh. the kids away, everybody. This is gonna get weird. <laughs> Let me think. Hard to remember what happened last week, much less the whole twenty-five and a half years. Uh, I'd probably say, <clears throat> and it's kind of a supernatural type thing. Now, and I, I'm gonna press. This was not my call, but it, it's weird enough <laughs> that I've just got to because I don't have anything this this weird. Mm -hmm. But guy that was uh he was a friend of mine or still is a friend of mine. We worked together at a couple agencies and uh this happened in a city just down the road from here in Easley. Um <clears throat> there was a there's a mortuary that's right up the road from or not right up the road. <laughs> it's the guy with a chainsaw. Samurai sword. Yeah. <laughs> it's connected to what used to be an old movie theater or in the same parking lot. And he was telling the story, said it was raining. I mean, just like cats and dogs raining, We're just pouring down rain. And they got a call from the funeral homes, got a little Starbucks right there in the uh, 
in the lobby as you first go into it. And you got a call from a little girl that was uh, everybody apparently from the funeral home had already gone home, but the the coffee shop stayed open just a little bit longer than they did. Um, she said, or they went and asked for the call. My friend was just coming in, and they gave the call to a guy that was coming off shift. And he said, well, "Okay, well I'll go over there and you know kind of help him take the call, so then I'll do the report for it, so he don't have to do that." So they go. With it. I, I think the call was. Uh, Prowler, subject refusing to leave, something like that. I can't remember what he said the call came out as. But it, he said they uh, they walk in, and the girl is just hysterical, just like crying her eyes out. And they're like, what? what, what you know, what, what's going on? What happened? And uh, said the girl told him, said, guy walked in, and he just walked straight past me as I was telling him, sir, can I help you, sir? Can I help you? What do you need? And said he just he walked past me and he walked into the back to where the the morgues are or the you know the caskets and all that stuff. And my buddy he's he's one of them that's kind of he's creeped out by going into places like this. Mm-hmm. And he's like, ah, man. He looked at Parson. We're gonna have to go back here and check this. He's like, yep, we're gonna have to. And he's like, oh, man. So get a description of the guy. I can't remember what she, what he said the guy was wearing. But anyway, and they had seen footprints like coming from the door to right up next to where she was at because, like I said, it was raining. Didn't see him anywhere else. <clears throat> and uh, so he's like, well, you know, you know, I guess feet dried off or whatever, you know, <laughs> but the footprints just disappeared. So they go back there and they're walking around. They're clearing rooms. Well, they get back to the embalming room. They walk in the door. And there's a guy. But he's in the coffin. And he's being worked on. And he matches the description of what that girl gave them. Clothing and all. Oh, hell no. But and, and this, yeah. this is like a teenage girl working there. She ain't gone back there and looked at this guy mm-hmm. and got this description. I'd say that's the creepiest story that I've ever heard in law enforcement. And that was just, just down the road from where we're at. Yeah, no. yeah that's pretty creepy. Yeah. That that story creeps me out. And I've heard I've heard him tell it several times. Never changed at all. But that it creeps me out every time I hear it. Well, the little town I worked in right before my back went out and I've still got my badge. I got to I got to keep it when I when I down. But here it is. It's I was uh with Walnut Grove Police. But uh, there was, Walnut Grove's an old little town. It's an only town about 600 people. And I worked graveyards out there. And uh, there was one building in town that it, it was falling in on itself. It was unsafe to enter the building. Uh, one of the older buildings in town. and But the front, the facade of the building was still intact. But the back half of the building was caving in. And there would be times I would go by that building in the middle of the night. And one of the, uh, the light, a light would be on in one of the upper windows. And there was no way anybody was inside because the place was falling apart. That place used to creep me out. I started to go in one night because I thought somebody was up there messing around. And there was literally no way to get up. The the, the part of the building that had the staircase in it was, was caved in. And there was no power to the building. No. And it wasn't like something I made an official report on, but, you know. It was probably four or five times the whole time I worked out there. I'd drive by that building and there'd be a light on in it. No, look what happened to you. Look at the story you told you told us when you were coming home in the patrol car. Mm-hmm. The little, little girl? The little girl. Yeah, my little wife girl. saw her in the house. And, and I saw that little girl at her driveway. And it's not that I didn't believe my wife when she told me. She told me she'd seen a little girl standing at the end of the hallway, down the hallway from our bedroom in like 1800 style clothing. And she said, Mama. And when my wife started to go toward her, she just disappeared. It's not that I didn't believe her. It's just I never saw it. I never saw anything like that. And I checked with county records. And apparently there was a farm farmhouse on the land where our house sat. It was a subdivision then. But back then it used to be a farm. And it had burnt down. And uh, I, I don't. I never could find any record of, of anybody that died there. But the house had burnt down. Uh, right. But uh, I 
I was coming home one night and pulled into the driveway and saw this little girl dressed like she was an extra from Little House on the Prairie step out from behind a little pine tree in our, at the edge of our driveway. And when she stepped back behind it, she was gone. There's nowhere she could have gone that I wouldn't have seen her. And I got out with a flashlight and checked my whole yard, couldn't find her, went in the house. I'm like, hey, I just think I think I just saw your little girl. And it, it, when I described it, it was the exact same description. So yeah. I've seen some pretty creepy crap, but I've not actually gone to a cryptid call as an officer. Well, yeah, I've, I've never gone to a, a cryptid call either, or at least not one that was dispatched yeah. that way. Nothing, not that I know of anyway. Yeah. <laughs> You kind of wonder how many of those prowlers that were not there when you got there might have been something exactly. like that. But mm -hmm. you know. yeah, yeah, when uh, the whole area around Walnut Grove is is completely like rural. I mean, it's a little bitty town kind of set in the woods, and uh, there there was a farm right at the edge of town. That once in a while I would go, and in the I think it was southeasternmost corner of the pasture, the cattle would be funneled into that corner with facing the other direction, like they were afraid something was going to get them and i would spot like that field never saw anything out there but the cows all acted like they were spooked yeah you know we, we got activity here at the house i mean i mean john like i told you john i walk out get a cup of coffee he goes were you just out in the kitchen i was like no <laughs> he goes no really i'm like no i was in the bedroom watching tv what are you talking about Come on, man. And then, you know, I'll be sitting at the table with them, and I'll see it out of the corner of my eye where I'm like, okay. You know. But, yeah, but it's not a, an eerie feeling. It's like, you know, I. it's probably relatives, probably my dad, probably my aunt. You know, it's not, I don't feel threatened by it. You know, I haven't, like, I'll see stuff in my room. The dogs will react to it. You know, my two dogs will be, like, staring up at the ceiling, like, and then I'll be watching TV, and I'll look over. I'm like, what the hell are they looking at? You know, it's just weird well, shit that goes on. There's all kinds of videos of people videoing, like, especially cats. Because mm -hmm. I've heard that cats are really in tune to that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, cats sitting there, and all of a sudden, it's just like, it'll just oh, start yeah. staring at a spot on the wall or on the ceiling, and won't, you know, won't move. And, it just, and all of a sudden, start doing that back arch thing like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there is a higher power. Of course there is. You know, oh, but, absolutely. We're not, you know, that you can't explain it. You can't explain what goes on. You can't, you know. You know, there's demons, there's angels, there's, you know, it's it's been known in the Catholic religion. It goes back thousands and thousands of years. So, I mean, it happens. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, don't, I'd rather put it like this. I'd rather run through the woods chasing a Bigfoot and dealing with something that's supernatural. I would kind of agree. <laughs> I would kind of agree with that. If it bleeds, I have a 50-50 chance. You know, when it turns into mist and it's choking you to death and you're getting scratches on your chest, nah, I'm not about that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm out. You know, it's like when Eddie Murphy made the joke. He goes, why do white people just hang around haunted houses? You know, we hear, get out. Oh, look, we got a neighbor. You know, it's like, you know, if it was somebody else, it'd be out of there. You know, and that's me. I would, I'd be like, nah, I'm not calling. That's the anybody. whole premise of a horror film. You know, if they leave, yeah. there's no horror film. <laughs> We're not calling any investigation in. Sorry. So, you know, it's not happening. Uh, what is? Well, it? you know, you, then you've got. The, the, uh, the other end, you've got cryptid, cryptid stories about things that I would never want to encounter in the woods. Right. Like the Wendigo. I, I would not want to run into one of those things. Right. That now, would be was, something I, I would definitely, you know, be like, oh, look at the time. <laughs> Cam had a really good, I can't remember what episode it was, but he had a really good story about a Wendigo. I, the, the guy that was hunting the buck, uh, mm. yeah, he named it Dozer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That, yeah, that I remember was, that one. That's a good story. Yes, that yeah, was really people good story. Calling in. Yeah, I mean, these people call in and tell them these stories, man, and write to them, and, you know, they're having experiences like this. Look at, what is it, um, what's that ranch called out there, D.A.? Skinwalker Ranch. Yes, Walker there's a ranch. series on Netflix about that if you hadn't watched it. it yeah. I, I started watching it a couple of days ago, and I've got two or three episodes in. So I hadn't decided if it's one of those, you know. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's overly sensationalized just for TV, but I kind of, anymore, I kind of err on the side of caution mm -hmm. because 
got to remember the whole point of a TV show is to get ratings so they get paid yeah. and stay on the air. Right. So you know they're gonna they're gonna kind of sensationalize stuff. Um, so it's 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 tough to find a show that you can consider pure research because those don't generally sell. Those are called documentaries, and documentaries yeah. don't make a lot of money. True. Hence why you have shows like Mountain Monsters. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because it's entertainment. Entertainment sells, and you know people that think they're being educated on something, they're like, oh, look at that. I'm going to change the channel. Right. Well, That's fellas, true. we are hit. And, uh, it has gone by fairly quick. Um, again, Rob, before we take off, tell us a little bit more about your channel and some of the things you've got planned, and I will post the link again. All right. Uh, it's called What's Really Out There. Um, we got a uh, email address, What's Really Out There, 2022, 2022, uh, at gmail.com. If you got any stories, and it, you know, Lance and I talk about staying in the upstate as far as things go, but, but we're by no means landlocked into that. If you got a story somewhere, you know, it, send us an email. Um, you know, I'm an investigator at heart. I've done that a lot of that. I've always told people besides being a canine, that was my favorite thing in law enforcement was being an investigator. I love to, I love to tear into, into something and see if I can figure out why things went the way they went. That's, that's just my nature. That's where we're kind of trying to go with this show. You know, Lance, from the outdoor standpoint of, okay, is there anything in the in this area that could be misidentified? Mm -hmm. Me of where does the evidence take us? Uh, but we're not going to be just typecast into that type. Of, you know, we want to look into everything: Bigfoot, Dogman, Mothman, anything. Mm -hmm. And you know, just open discussions. You know, if we if we get times to have forums like this where we can have y'all. And just discuss things like we have. That's I'm that's the kind of kind of what Lance and I have liked to do. And it's just like this, just sitting around talking about things, bouncing ideas off each other. And, and I think it's just, you know, I think, like I said, this helped me figure out that I wanted to do this. And it's something that I've poured, like like I said, you know, long boring life. As far as some people would say. If, Watching, I, I've watched probably every B movie of werewolves, vampires, Bigfoot. If it's out there, I've probably seen it. And <laughs> I don't know if that's an accomplishment, but you know, I have. And I just that stuff's always fascinated me. And I just I want to I want to hear people's stories. I want to tear into them. And you know, I'm not trying to say I'm going to prove somebody right or prove somebody wrong. I just want to I just want to get into the the meat and potatoes of the story and say, you know, how, how are these stories all the same? How, you know, what are common factors? What, you know, what is this sighting over here got, that this sighting's got that we can tie it together and, you know, we want to prove it right more than we want to prove it wrong. We're not, we're not trying to disprove somebody, you know, Anthony, you and I are part of that small community of people who've seen it and we just want, we just want to get into everything. We want to get into whatever we can. I'm right there with you. And I, I enjoy the, hearing the stories and talking cryptids. And, and it's it's something that I can you know, I can do anytime. And just ask my wife. You know, she'll tell you, you, get me started on cryptids, and I can't shut up about it. I want to thank uh, William Bedard real quick for that. It says a dollar for each gallon of the new hat. Nice. <laughs> but thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. We've had a great time. Robbie, brother, thank you for coming on. I we need to do it again. Back. You know, your show or mine, either one, I'm, I'm down. Um, I, I, we're, uh, you know, we've got a long way to go. I mean, it's it's not like we're ever going to get to the bottom of this mystery until, nah, but you until, somebody, until yeah. it's brought in for science, so to speak. So there's always going to be new stuff to talk about, new sightings, reports, uh, new behaviors that have been observed. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, we're I think we're in this for the long haul, and there's always going to be another mystery for us to, to us to look us us to look into. Be it UFO, paranormal, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Dogman, Mothman, any or all of the above. Uh, so I I think it's a it's going to be going to be a, an interesting journey as we continue to dig into these subjects. Um, 
Anthony, Doc, you guys got anything to say before we wrap up? No, I don't really. No. Hey, you know, one we'll throw this in one more time. Don't forget to head over to darkangelmedical.com and use the code cryptid 25 for 25 percent off your order and i believe that is the best code they're offering right now absolutely and that's just special for us over here at, the, at dax machina I want to thank doc for doing that that is awesome My and pleasure. uh again i can't endorse it enough folks remember if you're going to go camping hunting fishing hiking backpacking cryptid hunting any of the above be be careful if you're wherever you're going to go make sure you let somebody know where you're going to be and when you're when you're expected to be back because 911 doesn't always work especially if you don't have cell service mm -hmm. and you sometimes you know when you when you're out in the middle of nowhere the slightest injury can prove to be fatal a rolled ankle 5 miles into the bush could be the difference between life and death yeah and absolutely. take take some sort of med kit uh, make sure somebody knows where you're going to be and when you're supposed to be back. Take something to defend yourself. You know, not everything out there is, is going to be friendly. Uh, there are things out there that aren't cryptid related that will hurt and kill you. Bears, mountain lions, snakes, other people. Uh, sometimes the most dangerous thing you're going to run across is man. Uh, so take something to defend yourself, even if it's a stick, a knife, you know, a, a bow. You know, if you don't carry a firearm, if you're opposed to carrying a firearm, carry a pepper spray. Get bear spray. Uh, I always take a firearm, but I always take more than one. Um, just always remember the simple rule that when it comes to carrying equipment, one is none and two is one. You always plan for one to fail. So never rely on one. Like going into a cave, don't go take take one source of light. I always took three. Make sure you know, you're prepared. Make sure you've got some sort of med kit. Make sure someone knows where you're at. Be safe and come home safe. Uh, carry a med kit because the life you save might be your own. Uh, and, you know, this, this, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, folks. You know, I want you guys, if you're going out there, I want you to be safe. I want you to come back because, uh, you know, everyone here at DAX Machina is family. So you guys, we don't have fans. We have friends. And we are thrilled as, thrilled as hell that each and every one of you have chosen to spend the evening with us, listen to us, us morons sitting up here talking about Bigfoot and crazy calls and goofy stuff and, and we, we just have we really have a good time and, and and i'm quite fond of each and every one of you so i don't want you guys to get hurt i want you guys to be safe and if you're going out there have a plan and and be prepared for the worst because the worst can happen when you least expect it Amen. and again i've said this before i will say it again i will always say it stories are journeys that we take together and I want to thank each and every one of you for taking this journey with us. You guys are awesome. And we will see you guys Saturday night. And you guys be safe. Yes. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you for joining us. Catch us again Wednesdays and Saturdays on DAX Machina. A special thanks to all our channel members and Patreon supporters. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe.